the chairman this evening. On my left, the members of the board are Michael Villa. Brett Feldman. Sam Walker. Susan Long. Also in attendance this evening are Jared Simpson, Assistant City Attorney, uh, Re Robert, Roberta Mead Curry, and LaShawn Dock of Land Development Coordination, and Mr. Brian Knox of Natural Resources. Uh, I will take just a few minutes to review tonight's procedures. Cases will be called in the order that they appear on the agenda. When your case number and applicant's name are called, please stand in either aisle to the side of the room to acknowledge that you are here. Staff will then give a brief introduction to the board of each application. When you approach the podium, please speak into the microphone and state your name, address, and if you have been sworn in. The applicant and or their agent will have 10 minutes to give testimony, present witnesses, and documentation as a part of their presentation. This is your time to present all of your evidence. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak in support of or in opposition to the application will then have three minutes each. After that, the board may have an opportunity to ask questions regarding the application. Finally, the applicant will have an additional five minutes for a rebuttal if needed. The time periods as stated will be kept by the chair. Any information such, such as pictures or plans that have not been previously submitted as a part of your petition and you intend to present at this hearing for consideration in support of your petition must be individually presented and accepted by the board. After acceptance by the board, you must submit the item to staff for it to be entered and made a part of the permanent record. The board bases its decision on competent and substantial evidence which is presented this evening and which meets the criteria required by the city's code of ordinances. The variance granted by the board will be for only what is shown on the site plan and will be compliant with any terms and conditions stated in the approval by the board. You must have four votes for your variance to be approved. If an insufficient vote is obtained, the case shall be automatically carried over for consideration at the board's next meeting. If approved, your variance will expire two years from today's date. All other city codes will need to be met. <clears throat> if your case is continued, it will be continued to either the February 11th or March 10th public hearing dates. If you wish to appeal the Variance Review Board's decision to City Council, you must file a petition for review of a board decision within 10 business days of the decision. If your variance is granted, you will not be able to pull any permits until after the 10-day appeal period has passed. Your cooperation will help ensure that this meeting runs smoothly and will be greatly appreciated. Before we begin the first case, is there any business regarding the agenda that staff would like to address? Mr. Simpson? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I think we have a, a departure, and I, I don't know if you were gonna uh, congratulate Mr. Villa on his... No, I was going to wait until the end, but you just... Oh, okay. <laughs> but yes, we do have a, a departure from the board. Uh, Mr. Villa, this is his last night. Um, I didn't realize it until I walked in tonight. I knew it was coming up, but uh, we have a little uh, gift for you. thank uh, my fellow board members. Some of these guys have been here since the beginning, which was four years ago, and uh, to the newcomers as well, and to city staff and, uh, and everybody here who's made this a very interesting experience and uh, was happy to be here, so appreciate it. You're welcome. Anybody else want to say anything? I just want to say thanks for serving. And before you leave, have you found your replacement? <laughs> I'm asking around. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Anything else, uh, Mr. Simpson? No, Mr. Chair. I would just say that we do we we do have vacancies. If um, if anyone knows anyone interested in participating, uh, they can contact Eric Cotton at the Land Development uh, Coordination Department, um, and we we're looking for folks. We've got an open arborist seat, landscape architect, uh, as well as an alternate. And Mr. Chairman, you're. Uh, you informed me that your term will be expiring I, shortly as I well. I think it's so. a couple of months away. Yeah. So we are looking for folks. So we would encourage you all to tell your friends to apply. Thank you. All right. 
Uh, if there's no further business to discuss, is there a motion to approve last month's minutes without objection? I so move. Okay, we have a motion for approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, minutes are approved. As submitted. Uh, I'll ask, <coughs> I'll now ask Mr. Simpson to address the board regarding any ex parte communications. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'd like to ask the board if there's been any ex parte communications regarding any of the cases that are coming before you tonight. Seeing none. Okay. All right. At this time, all persons who will be presenting evidence or testimony to the board shall rise and be sworn in. So if you plan on speaking tonight, please stand up. <laughs> Even if you don't. Even if it's on your name. <laughs> Okay, with that, we're going to call the, uh, the first case, which is VRB 20-01. This case was continued from last month uh, because the board came to a 3-3 three, three, um, tie. Uh, what I'd like to tell the applicant and or their agents and or anybody else who's here to speak tonight, uh, we're not going to completely rehear this case like we did last month. We don't need to hear it again. I could, as chair, just move straight to a vote. But lots of folks turned out. We want you to have your opportunity. So please limit your comments to new evidence only. Please don't share with us what you've already told us. Uh, all of the board members that are here were here last month. Mr. Fester? I had a question for Mr. Simpson. So I was here last month and heard this. <clears throat> I realized tonight that the applicant's son is his agent. I do business with him on a regular basis. And so I thought I should bring that up to you and see what you think. Well, um, the, the applicant's son didn't participate in the, in the last hearing, and, and I don't know if you were aware at that time, but that, um, that does sound like a conflict. And uh, I would, being that it is a, a business relationship, um, it sounds like a pecuniary conflict that I would ask for you to recuse and uh, fill out the appropriate form that I can assist you with. I agree. Okay. See you in the next case. Ms. Mead, would you please proceed? I'm going to ask a question of the board and of legal. If you are only going to hear a certain portion, where would you like me to start? Start the uh, with anything new. Okay. <laughs> Um, right. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to give us a brief Quick refresher. recap. Okay. Okay. All right. Mr. Okay. Chairman, if yes. I may, before we begin, I would recommend that the board follow the the usual procedure, but just that the folks that speak uh, take heed of the chairman's instructions to keep it limited to new and relevant evidence. Okay. Yeah, that's I I agree. Thank you. Okay. okay. Roberta Mead Curry, Planning, Design, and Development Coordination. I have been sworn. I'm going to present the, the staff report from before. Um, the address is 6915 North River Boulevard. The code sections under review this evening is section 27286. The applicant is seeking to reduce the wetland setback from 25 feet to 7 feet on the north side yard. Applicant is seeking to vest existing conditions of accessory structure. I'll bring you up to date on your request from last hearing on that. The property is zoned SHRS, which is Seminole Heights Residential Single Family. The Hillsborough County property appraiser information was included in your previous packet. Um, all departments. Um, found it consistent with zoning finding it inconsistent. Again, the second, okay. I just realized now that we're down to five board members, should we be mm -hmm. allowing the applicant to make a decision if he wants to be heard tonight? because of the three vote to deny rule. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm, 
they can raise that at the, at the time. I, d I don't know that we're going to be any better off next month due right. to the vacancies that we have and okay. the, um, the departures that we have. Okay. Um, but certainly if, if the applicant's interested. I want interested the applicant to know the rule. That's my, right. my main objective here. <laughs> Right. I okay. think you clarified the rule in the in your opening statement. No, actually, I didn't can... address it because I thought I had six. Okay. Um, so. So I'm... it's a majority. It's a majority vote to deny an application, but it is four affirmative votes to a approve an application. Um, I think them okay. being aware of it, if they want to request a continuance, that's up to them, but I don't think right. the board's obligated to give them. No, 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 I wasn't suggesting that. I wanted them to know and allow them to decide before we spend more time. Is, sure. that, is that appropriate? Sure. Okay. So if you don't mind, applicant, you're here. Um, just so you understand that if three people deny, you're done. You don't get to come back on, on this application. But it will take four of us to approve. That's okay. the rule of the board. Okay. We so, what would you? What, what's your pleasure tonight? I think, with the condition of the board and the current vacant seats, this is going to be a situation for an extended period of time. We'd like to go ahead and move forward tonight. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have it heard. Thank I'm you. sorry. <laughs> this me. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. <coughs> okay. Uh, the property appraiser's report um, was included in your packet. I'll show it here again. Surrounding area, the, the um, property is located here, with the surrounding area being all Seminole Heights RS, residential single family. The street is here. Sorry. River Boulevard is here, with the waterway wetland here. Site plan. Accessory structure here, concrete area here, body of water here. This is a cross section, if you remember. View of the front. Same front. View of the north side of the property with the dead end street and the body of water here. Again, further into what we call the wetland. Looking down the street to the north. And again, looking down the street to the south. Better shot of the front yard. There was wetland information received from EPC. That report was included in your package. I won't go into that. But this was the drawing delineating um, the wetland top of bank and the 25 foot setback and Brian Knox is here to go into that if you need further information tonight. New items. We do have two items that were presented at the hearing. You had uh, two PowerPoint presentations, which is in the report. Um, and we do have a new authorized agent here, um, which he submitted the appropriate documentation to be here tonight. I think you have information for the EPC, right? For the, yeah, okay. Um, I don't think I have anything else to add to the record. Any questions for staff board? Seeing none, uh, will the applicant or their agent please come forward and uh, please <coughs> state your name, your address, and if you've been sworn in, and you'll have 10 minutes for your presentation. Thank you. My name is Aaron Murphy. My address is 3508 West Tacon Street, Tampa, Florida, 33629. I have been sworn in. In an interest of
Taking heed to the recommendations of the board, I'll keep it short and to the point with new information. Um, we were instructed to take a look at the way the variance was put together along with the accessory structure and in meeting with uh, Roberta and Mike, we determined that the accessory structure uh, in its closeness to the building is going to be set with a DE, uh, design exception one, which has been filed. We also reached out to the EPC and asked for an agency comment sheet, which was uploaded to Acela. I did bring additional comments or additional copies of that for anyone that would like to see it. Um, it touches that they have no issues with the variance in its current condition and current site plan moving forward as proposed. Reducing the setback down to the seven feet from the 25 feet is consistent with Seminole Heights. Seminole Heights is known for its outdoors areas, the front porches, the back porches. This lot is, uh, this lot is unique because it has a wetland that runs along the side of it. This was a man-made canal built some time ago. And that is where the beauty of the lot is. That's where the scenery is. That's where the natural uh, area of the lot is. And if you have the 25-foot setback, it leaves absolutely nothing left on that side of the residence to enjoy. Um, as stated, we do think it is consistent with the Seminole Heights area and the residents there that love to be outdoors and enjoy that. Um, it also has no safety issues for the surrounding areas or the residences in the area. It falls 100% on private property. Uh, there is a six foot privacy fence along the right of way keeping anyone else from coming into that area. So there should be no uh, safety or welfare issues. Um, that being said and not really branching out much further into old information. That's what we have. Does that complete your presentation? That would complete my presentation. Thank you for your time. Okay, you're welcome. All right, is there anyone in the audience that would like to <coughs> speak on this application, either in favor or against? And again, I'm gonna remind you, I don't wanna hear the stuff that we heard before. Give me something new, because I don't think there were any issues or questions that remained. And be sure to state your name, address, and if you've been sworn. Thank you. I have a PowerPoint presentation. If, if it could be loaded up, and I have copies for the board and for the attorney and, and for um, the record. I need to PowerPoint. Let's see, how do I, can I get it on the screen here or does not, not? I'm not sure it's something, but this is the device I think to the work the. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm ready. Okay. At the December um, uh, hearing, we covered part one. You don't want to hear that uh, about that again. The new information I'm bringing to you is a wetlands partition. The neighborhood signed. And, and new information about the erosion to the creek. Um, okay, so the only thing that's new is the bottom left and the bottom middle picture. In addition to the safety hazard of blocking the hydrant, now this structure is gonna be one foot away from the building and not five feet. The five feet separation is to keep fire extension from traveling from one structure to the other. So that's a new safety issue for your consideration. Um, the applicant had, uh, uh, three letters of support, only one was signed. So two were not signed. So my daughter and I created this petition. We went throughout the neighborhood and we made all participants read the petition first and view the pictures that are on the next slide before they signed. Everyone had full knowledge of what they were signing. And even though some of the residents were so upset they wanted their spouse to sign, we told them no because we wanted to show you that there was 20 you know, different people, not four or five under the same roof. 26 out of 27 people signed the petition. The one person who did it, he was a young guy about my daughter's age, he said he wanted more information and he probably wanted her to come back. Everyone signed the petition. These are the pictures they all saw. The one letter of support that the applicant had is from this guy, right across the creek. 
who was fined $450 for dumping into the wetlands. So that's the only one that is approving this. So now the, the erosion. Um, you can see online, you can see there how many times I requested public records. On line three, I, I follow up because it's been over a month since I've seen the records. On line six, I realize Miss Beck is involved, and even though I have never seen or spoken to Miss Beck, a prior experience from a while ago resulted in my need to accept but verify everything that Miss Beck was providing. So you go all the way down to line 25, the day of the December hearing. I still don't have no records, and Mr. Knox comes up here after being sworn in and incorrectly informs you that the county EPC made a no erosion determination. So on line 26, I contact the EPC. On line 27, they respond to me and say, we never said that. On line 28, December 19, the EPC contacts Ms. Beck and requests that she immediately change her report. She does, and then she backdates it to December 4th, the original report. To date, I still have not received either one of these reports, and I've made, you've seen how many requests. So since that time, uh oh, we're missing a slide. Well, since that time, I had to make other records requests because I, I, I anticipated maybe natural resources coming in here and now saying we made the determination. So I was able to nail down neither Ms. Beck nor Mr. Knox possess any specialized training, education, or certifications to determine creek wall erosion. Neither Ms. Beck nor Mr. Knox used any before or after photographs to make a determination. Neither Ms. Beck nor Mr. Knox used any surveys. All right, how do I? I need to play this. I don't know how to get there. Hey, good afternoon, Kim. Um, happy holidays to you. I, I have to back. play this. Um, um, I'm so sorry Mr. Gonzalez is torturing you guys now. Um, he has been, there's a big, big neighborhood dispute over on River Boulevard, and he's, he's just been um, real challenged to deal with. Um, he turned his neighbor in for uh, construction without a permit, and they built within the wetland setback. And the reason I said uh, that my in my report sure three minutes was because when I forgot who had gone out there to review it, I think it was Joel. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. But they called me and they said, "Why no, no, am I out here?" It. Okay, I don't know how to stop it. I'm trying. I don't know how to stop it. Okay. Yes. Okay. This All right. Well, no, no, you're going to play it and then you're going to talk right after because it's only a minute. It's only a minute and a half. Okay. All right. But I'm going to put the line Just at let, the yeah, top of the finish. bank. So it was more of a conversation I had. And I was just trying to um, downplay Mr. Gonzalez's um, ass assertions that it was eroding into the, um, the little tidal area there, which it wasn't. And uh, I was out there on several occasions um, and didn't see any erosion, didn't see anything. And it was really more my, my opinion, if, if it came across that you said it, I apologize, but I might have said that to Mr. Gonzalez um, just to calm him down. The case got continued not because of the wetland setback, because of building separations. So. I apologize. Um, just let Mr. Gonzalez know that was my opinion, and that. Um, but it had been a conversation with whoever went out there to do the wetland delineation. I don't remember. They called me and it was not sure why they were out there, or what we what the city had needed from EPC. So it was a short conversation. They said no, they didn't see any problems, um, and that's all they said. So. All right, sorry for the trouble, sweetie. Give me a call if you have any further questions. Bye-bye. Okay, you got about 30 seconds. To be clear, this is the e she's calling the EPC because uh, she claimed the EPC made the decision where she actually made the decision and she doesn't have any certificates or any type of training to make that decision. We requested when she was out there, so unless she has a great, great memory of the savant, she would be able to ha have not be able to see something and to do a, uh, um, a, a metrics. So I believe that it has not been done, no, uh, and they are claiming that it is, and um, I think it was meant to fake the board. I'm done. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, please come up, state your name, address, and if you've been sworn in.
Okay, at this time, uh, are there any questions uh, by the board of the applicant and or those who spoke? I have just a few. Mr. Phillips. Um, there was a, this is for the Gonzalez's, whoever would like to take it. There was a new EPC report that was introduced tonight. Um, can you, have you seen that report and what does that report mean to you? Yes, sir. And Michael Gonzalez, 6916 North River Boulevard, and I've been sworn in, so I might have missed that before. Um, I saw the report, and you can see in the first line, it says this had been there since 2011, and your records, you'll see where the carport was put in in 2014. It wasn't 2011. And it says no violation with Chapter 111. Then when you go down to the bottom, it says anybody who disturbs the wetlands without express written consent from the EPC director or designee is a violation of Chapter 111. So I don't understand how somebody can build without a permit in the wetlands and not be violating Chapter 111 when it specifically says you have to have written authorization from the EPC director before any work is done. So that, it just makes no sense to me. It's the, you know, it says one thing up here and then it contradicts it right down here very clearly. Okay, thank you. Um, You're and welcome. now a question for the applicant. Yes. Um, in, in prior testimony, um, from the last hearing, mm -hmm. my concern was on hardship. Can you, and, and let me, I'll, I'll be direct with you in terms of what my concern is. The hardship as I read it is that a contractor that was hired by you or your family um, installed work without a permit. Um, I see that as an agent, your, your contractor, um, installing the work without a permit, that imputes to you or your family as, as an applicant. And, mm -hmm. and as unfair as that may be, you can take that up with the contractor, but I, I read that as imputing to your agent your action. Are there other hardships that you can call my attention to so that I can evaluate those in evaluating your petition? Yeah, the additional hardship that we're speaking about this evening was the lot on the north side is losing 50 feet to a man-made canal that has now been deemed a wetland. So once you remove that 50 feet and then you add the wetland setback into it, that leaves no side yard left by the home to enjoy the natural wetland area, that natural canal. That is the Excuse me. <clears throat> That's the hardship that I think truly exists for the property. It's due to the irregularity of the lot and the irregularity of the man-made canal that abuts it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other board members have any questions for anybody? Uh, let me ask a question of uh, the applicant, Mr. Murray, or the agent, Mr. Murray. Yes, sir. Uh, what is your background? I'm a professional land surveyor. Okay. Um, Mr. Gonzalez just testified he didn't understand how somebody could build inside a wetland. Um, this case is not inside the wetland, correct? It's in the wetland setback? Correct. Okay. Um, do you know, as a surveyor, I'm glad to hear that, <laughs> do you happen to know the history of the wetland? When, when was it a wetland? When did it become an official wetland? So that's hard to determine, to be honest with you. It was a man-made canal. I can, there was an article that my dad provided, I guess, previously from a long, long time ago where they showed this canal being made and people swimming in it and kind of enjoying it as a community area. And I guess once that community use started to decay a little bit and the uh, retaining walls became a little more rubble, and you started getting a little more top of bank versus a steep 90 degree type deal, that would probably be when you start thinking of wetlands, um, once nature starts using the area versus people. Okay, so you, you raise a physical question for me now. Mm -hmm. uh, are there other properties on this same canal, wetland, that have vertical seawalls versus what the applicant has? I'd have to look at the aerial. I or, believe is, or is the seawall now, regardless of the time it took, is mm -hmm. it a pretty typical thing? It is still a man-made riprap. 
Right. No, I understand what it is. Yes. I'm asking if the neighboring properties around the same canal. Are they? Do they have vertical seawalls? Um, and do you know if they did have vertical seawalls, if their wetland delineations would be substantially different than the applicants? You know, I'm not a professional uh, environmentalist, so I can't really speak to whether it is or it isn't, but there are existing different types of sea logs along that canal. Okay, all right. Um, and you, you have no issue with the delineation of the actual setback line, now, the wetland, I mean, excuse me, which creates the 25-foot setback. Correct. Um, not that I can argue this evening. Um, if I had some more time, I think that Due to the, the man-made nature of that canal, there's probably a little more that could go into it. But um, I, I don't think it needs to be touched on this evening. I do think that the comment sheet coming back from the EPC and Chris Steins, who is a licensed environmental person, speaks to the uh, condition of the existing wetland and the condition of the wetland as affected by re reducing the setback, okay. not having any effect and not having them any reason to um, be against this variance. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there was testimony last month, um, not so much tonight, <laughs> um, that the neighbors were very concerned about uh, the runoff. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to what, how you perceive the runoff to be? Uh, yes, sir. The runoff from the structure that's on the site has got a corrugated roof structure. And those corrugations run east and west. So it takes the runoff actually away from the top of banks and it would fall into the rear yard setback or the rear yard area and into the front yard area instead of being a sheet flow into the wetland. I believe that coverage and that reduction of the runoff is what has helped maintain a good top of bank and a good seat or sorry, a good uh, buffer that trees can thrive and the uh, soils have not eroded in that area. Okay. <clears throat> I've got a question for Mr. Knox, since he got all dressed up again. <laughs> Brian Knox, Natural Resources. Um, you know, we're hearing, con you know, concerned testimony from neighbors about this, the condition of the bank. Um, and yes, you're not, you don't work for EPC. We, we all understand that. Um, but you are uh, in natural resources, and, and uh, have you dealt with site conditions similar to this in your everyday business with the city, or is this something that's kind of like way out, out in left field? No, we typically deal with um, wetland setbacks and uh, wetland areas, uh, but mostly just in terms of enforcing the buffer. Okay, okay. All right, and you, there was testimony last time that you don't have any concerns about the condition of the bank. Is that correct? That's correct. And has that changed since last month? It has not. Okay, all right. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, uh, applicant, you have five minutes for a rebuttal. Uh, Chairman, I believe a lot of your questions would have been covered in my rebuttal. Um, the only thing I can say is the EPC are the professionals. They're the ones that submitted this comment sheet. And uh, we just need to keep in mind, listen to the professionals. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I give us a moment since I'm the owner? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I guess you're entitled. Um, one more second. Uh, we just wanted to bring to the attention that a lot of the pictures shown previously on the PowerPoint were dated as far back as, uh, what was it, 20? 2012, um, 2013. There's some very, very old pictures in there of vehicles. Actually, one of the vehicles in the photo was mine, and I sold it three and a half years ago. So I know that for a fact they're a little bit older. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Thank you. We're just going to speak to the parents. That's all. All right. Uh, without objection, I'm going to move to close the public hearing. Uh, board, what is your pleasure? Would someone like to make a motion? And then we can have discussion.
this review. All right. Uh, I think in my particular instance, I, I heard the arguments, you know, both last month and then the discussion <coughs> tonight. Um, I can't quite get past the fact that this is indeed a self-imposed hardship, and but I also appreciate the fact that, you know, the, the house being built in 1955 and the way this, this wetland thing, you know, is coming up 25 feet may, of course, not be something that people would particularly like, but I think that we all have to deal with things that we don't like. So, up and also due to the fact that this wouldn't have come up had, uh, you know, been discovered that there were no permits issued for the construction of these structures on the property. You know, had the thing gone through permitting process, then, you know, this all would have come up that we would have been discussing about a variance at that point, not at this point. And then the discussion of, with, about EPC and all those things could have taken place, you know, before it all happened. So, you know, a lot of times we, we see these things where things are built and then there's a discussion and it makes sense to leave it. I just have a very difficult time in uh, approving that given so many variables here and the fact that, you know, that structure as well as other structures that, you know, that have been seen in, in photos here have been built on this property over numerous years. And uh, <clears throat> so therefore, I, I just really can't see voting yes for this. So I think for the sake of us coming to a decision, in that case, uh, I would move the variance request for VRB 20-1 for a property located at 6915 North River Boulevard in Tampa uh, is depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing to seek relief from section 27-286 in order to reduce the wetland setback uh, from 25 feet to 7 feet on the north side of uh, <clears throat> the property. Uh, uh, that said variance as condition uh, not be approved, in other words, be denied due to failure of the petitioner to meet its burden of proof to provide competent and substantial evidence in the record, and at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria as set forth in section 27-80 of the city code, and that's specifically that this is indeed a self-imposed uh, hardship. Uh, structures have been built on this property, and particularly without permit. Uh, you know, notwithstanding that lack of permit, and I think that uh, at this point, uh, as I said, I move that we deny the request. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Villa for denial. Is there a second? I'm not going to second it, but I do want to discuss it. Okay. Uh, unless, um, unless somebody else wants to second, we can still discuss. Does anyone else have a second? Does anybody else have a second? Okay, let's discuss. And I, and, and I should say I'm not going to I'm not going to second it yet. <laughs> um, my my concern, um, and and everything you said is is accurate, um, and is is within the realm of my concerns. But my concern, um, the last time we had this discussion was I did not hear other than the uh, a contractor that we hired built this without permits. Other than that, I did not hear a hardship addressed. This time, um, there was a hardship that was raised, and it was the, um, the man-made canal becoming a wetland at some point, um, essentially taking part of their property at, uh, at, at gradually. Um, and uh, you know that that impact is in some ways unique, particularly because there are other properties down the line that may not be impacted as much. Um, that coupled with the newly submitted EPC report, which was also a concern last time, um, that the report, you know, we had we had EPC not objecting, but we didn't really have an understanding of what that objection or non-objection was. So those two things give me slightly more comfort, and I'm very much on the fence um, about, and I'd like to hear what 
some of the board members, particularly my right, have to say about that because I, I'm on the fence as to whether I can support this given the new information that has been submitted. Like Mr. Chairman, if I may yeah. just raise a point of order. Uh, that according to the Roberts rules that apply to this uh, hearing, when a motion is made, if there's not a second, then that motion is motion essentially dies. null. Right. It doesn't right. go anywhere. So I think it may be um, a point of clarification or a point of order that this motion needs to either be seconded or the chair needs to open up a floor, uh, open up the floor to entertain new new motions. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm going to ask for a second from someone. On I'll the board. second it for discussion purposes. Okay. We have a we have a second uh, on the motion by uh, Mr. Feldman. Okay. We'll continue discussion. Ladies. Sure. Um, so. I agree with Mr. Feldman that um, it was nice to hear some additional hardship criteria uh, this evening and, and particularly some testimony that spoke specifically to um, the variance itself. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I am leaning towards the position that I took last week, um, which is that- Last month. Last, last month, um, which is that the applicant has uh, at least demonstrated a number of the hardship criteria that we are to consider. So aside from the fact that I don't believe that this will uh, cause injury to the health, safety, and welfare of others, um, as Mr. Feldman pointed out, the nature of the property and the location of it um, has, it sounds like has caused the setback line to recede over time, um, which is certainly not a self-created hardship and, and is uh, unique to the property. Um, but we also heard testimony about the fact that Seminole Heights itself um, sort of values and tries to incorporate uh, outdoor activities and um, kind of foster community in, in that way. And uh, to, you know, to that end, I think that it uh, furthers the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. Okay. Ms. Wong? I'm kind of on the fence. <clears throat> You're not on the line, you're on the fence. I'm on the fence. <clears throat> the petitioner purchased this place in 2010. And all those improvements that people are screaming about were put in in 2000, uh, 2011, except for the actual carport, which was put in in 2014. So all these problems arose because of things that he did after he purchased it. So to me, it's a self-imposed hardship. It's not just, which has nothing to do with the wetlands. But he did it to himself, and so I'm inclined to vote no. Okay. Um, I think I was the one that raised the objection, or the question, I should say, about the separation between the accessory structures, and I was, we heard tonight that <clears throat> apparently it's gonna be handled in a staff review, um, which, usually means it's a it's not a um, a major request uh, that's kind of how design exceptions work they're they're requested variances that are on a, a a more minor nature than what this board would hear about so i'm i'm glad to hear that it's being handled on a staff level um, as was previous stated uh, by mr b i believe um, a lot of times when we get these kinds of cases where something was built without a permit and had it gone through the correct process of coming to the board first, we always have that opportunity to say, okay, why does it have to go there as opposed to somewhere else on the lot? Um, and that's when we hope to hear arguments, or not arguments, but uh, hardships, you know, facts that would tell us that, yes, this lot's uniquely different than other lots, and this is why it's got to be where it is. Um, <clears throat> and we did hear testimony from neighbors last month, and I don't want to go into a lot of that, but a lot of them were were uh, code issues, uh, zoning violations, well, not zoning, but, but, but code violations. That's not what we're, what we're here about. But my sense is that uh, what, what I heard tonight from Mr. Gonzalez was that, yes, there's concern about the bank, but it's not, it doesn't seem to be causing anybody any harm. Um, 
And so because it is a significant side of the property um, and it is a water feature, yes, it makes sense that a property owner would want to front uses of their own property towards that body of water, whether it be a creek or a man-made canal or a retention pond. Um, I, I'm comfortable with the testimony that I've heard from our own natural, uh, excuse me, um, uh, natural resource people. Um, I, I trust their decision and their ability to look at something like erosion to tell if, you know, if there's a problem here or not and whether there's enough vegetation or riprap on the bank. So because EPC was in contact to come out and make that determination, I get that, but I'm comfortable with the city's uh, look at it, I guess. So um, because I'm not seeing any significant or I'm not hearing about any other significant damage being done to neighbors, we did hear testimony that the one and only neighbor that was okay with it is the one directly across from the canal. Um, you know, whether or not he had code violations doesn't play into what we have to use tonight to make our, to make our decision. Um, so if there was one neighbor that I wanted to hear about, it was that one. Um, and that's, if that's the only one that, that signed your, your petition, then, you know, that satisfied me. So, um, I would be inclined to, uh, allow this, this accept, or this, uh, setback. So we need to have a vote. Um, all in favor of denying the application, uh, as it was motioned by Mr. Villa, please say aye. Aye. All, all opposed? Nay. 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 Okay, we got a two to three. Um, so I think we have to have a motion, do we not, for approval? <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I think you would open up for um, uh, a vote again, and, and, it, and it does appear that this would fall under the same rule that uh, we, we fell victim, victim to um, last month, where um, it says a tie, the rule is on a 5.2, and it's insufficient or a tie vote. Um, but it, if there's insufficient votes to of achieve a, an action of the board, then mm -hmm. it would it would automatically continue. But the the board does need to go through the process. through the process. Okay, so I so I need a motion for approval from someone, please. Um, I uh, move that the variance request for case VRB two zero dash zero one, located at sixty nine fifteen North River Boulevard, as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing. Um, for a reduction in the wetland setback from 25 feet to 7 feet on the north side yard be approved um, because the applicant has uh, provided evidence of the five hardship criteria specifically that the property itself has unique characteristics both located on um, a canal and uh, the shape of the property um, additionally, it, does, uh, it doesn't appear that there is any significant hardship, uh, or excuse me, there is no significant um, damage to the health, safety, and welfare of others by allowing this variance. Okay. We have a motion for approval uh, by Ms. Walker. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Feldman. So all in favor of approval? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. So again, it's a three to two, so we don't have a sufficient vote to approve. So your case has been continued, or will be continued. Um, do we have an opening next month? It's supposed to go the following month, correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. In fairness to the, the rules, allow for 13, so it, don't go there. <laughs> I'm not saying there should be a vote. Um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chair, if I may, also just say, add that that the the matter is closed. The hearing is closed on this case, right. and um, it, it's not appropriate to uh, submit additional evidence to the board in the interim. Um, if the applicant 
um, or the folks that want to participate or staff wants to amend or add additional evidence to this case, um, what should happen is that that should happen at the next hearing. It shouldn't happen in the, the interim. And I, I know there was an email that was sent with the, um, with the staff reports and the, and the board did open up the hearing. But I would just ask that um, for this time around when we come back, that this hearing is closed and if anyone wants to supplement the record that's already been created from the last two hearings, that that uh, be done at the hearing next month um, after the board chooses to open the hearing should they choose to do it. So what, um, what should happen next month is that the board will entertain the idea of either opening the hearing again for, to receive this additional evidence or proceeding right to a vote. Yeah, if there is no evidence, then yes, we could go right to a vote. Correct. And it would be the pleasure of the board whether or not they want to hear from folks as, as to whether or not there is additional evidence. It would, it would evidence. be a pleasure of the board if the city would find a couple of alternates so that in fairness to the applicants, work on they would have seven people up right. here. Okay. Right. We're working on that. And, and uh, with uh, Mr. Villa's departure, we will we'll have some yeah. openings. So we, we, we might have some different board members by okay. next month. Thank you very much, and I'm ready to call the next case. <clears throat>
This is a, what I would term a classic, unique hardship case. And um, I would like to start uh, by providing to you a uh, highlighted plat. This is called Stony Point Subdivision, which was platted in 1956. And this is the plat from the property appraiser's website from the circuit clerk, clerk of circuit court, page 33, flat book page 33, page 22. And you'll see I've highlighted the, um, the lot, <coughs> and as it was laid out, and the survey, uh, which I have here as well, a scaled survey, all of these calls are consistent with the survey. And you'll notice that as the street progresses towards the bay, these are all square lots. And then you have this cul-de-sac lot. And then another interesting uh, phenomenon, when the, when the um, lot was laid out, this was dredged up from the bay. So the seawall was built. So when the lot was laid out, the seawall meandered up and over. For some reason, we don't know, but it's not consistent with the plat. You see, the plat has a 100-foot call to the rear. Here's the 100-foot call in the rear. This is Courtney and Beth's property line. However, the seawall went up. Why is that significant? The code says, for lots with seawalls, the depth of the waterfront yard shall be measured perpendicular to the center of the seawall. The rule presumes that everyone's lot is a square like these, and that the seawall is consistent with the property line. And as you frequently find in zoning law, there's always an exception to the rule, and that's why we're here this evening. The exception to the rule is the uniqueness of this lot and the extraordinary seawall that was built. Now, Courtney has prepared a site plan with his architect, <clears throat> and it is in your backup information. <clears throat> What I've done with the site plan is, again, I've, I've shown the, the original platted lot lines in green, and I'll get to the front set back in a moment. And you'll see the extraordinary seawall in blue, and then the new home is indicated in yellow. The current home, if you look closely, is in red, and you can see the uh, current home, which predates uh, this portion of the code, extends way into the front yard. But Courtney has followed the rule, and he's measured his setback perpendicular from the seawall 25 feet, of 20 feet, excuse me. But if he does it here, he's gonna have to build a house that follows the meandering of the seawall, and that's unfair. That's a hardship. That's unique to the property, and that's why we're here this evening. So we've drawn the seawall portion to the house at 7.2 feet. We're following the rule here, and we simply want you to approve the home as designed which is consistent with zoning. On the front, we've also indicated the meandering curvature of the cul-de-sac. Going back to the Stony Point Platte, you'll see it was originally there, and that cord bearing is about 48 feet. That is consistent with the site plan. Courtney and Beth simply want to build their home, of course, away from the cul-de-sac, but that requires a 20-foot setback rather than 25 He's meeting, they're meeting the 25 foot here, where it's a square lot like everyone else in the subdivision. But they need a variance from you this evening so they can build a house that's consistent with their neighborhood, that is consistent with the code except for this setback. Uh, I have had uh, no objections to this application. Um, due, an, due to an error of my own, we had to re-notice the neighborhood again, so they've received two notices and an explanatory letter uh, explaining the error in my previous notice. Uh, I would like to reserve the remainder of my comments for rebuttal. I respectfully request that your approval this evening. I've uh, digested the hardship criteria in the backup. If you'd like to read that uh, in the interest of time, I will wait until rebuttal if necessary. Thank you. Mr. Randolph, um, if that concludes your presentation, then yes, we'll, it does. we'll ask for anyone in the audience that would like to speak either on or for this application or against it. 
Seeing none, uh, board, do you have any questions for either the applicant or staff? I have a very quiet board tonight. <laughs> Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I, I guess I have one obvious question. If you could put the floor plan back up, Mr. Yes. Randolph. Yes. <clears throat> I'm just I'm just curious. Um, how how much impact, if any, would keeping the 25 foot setback have on this particular floor plan? Well, it would have a. 13-foot impact because that no wait, we're going 25 to 20 on the front yard did I oh, say I'm rear? Sorry, I'm sorry if I um, said rear uh, front yard you're, if, you're asking for a five-foot reduction if right. if the board didn't want to give that could you tell us or if they did want to give it uh, you know why why do you need it well he'd have to pull he'd pull the, he'd have to pull the house back another five feet here to be consistent with the cul-de-sac and it would you have you'd have a curvilinear home instead of a more of a <coughs> straight home. It's just more consistent to have that wall perpendicular with the western boundary and uh, perpendicular with the eastern boundary instead of a curving area. The remainder of the subdivision is, as I mentioned, everyone else has a square lot and they can easily meet 25. And according in best case, they have to come down here and then come all the way down here. And that's unfair as compared to, well, not unfair is not the word I'm using. That's a hardship as compared to the benefit that their other neighbors have to their property rights. Um, okay. I don't know if I got a question. We got, we got my, the question I was, or the answer to the question, but go ahead, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Moore, more comment. I agree on the front yard. This is unique because of the cul-de-sac. I just wanted to mention that the rest of the neighborhood is not square. They all have these seawall notches. We've seen many, many, many cases from these neighborhoods. So I think maybe a more salient argument than this is unique and singular might be that it actually matches the character of this neighborhood because you could show many, many examples where houses have encroached closer than 20 feet on that notch. Um, I can see it right here on this uh, Google map we've got. So I just wanted to point that out. I don't think it's unique and singular in this case because the whole neighborhood has it. The, the front yard certainly is. And, and I don't have an issue with the request. I think this is what variances are for, but I just wanted to point out I that, appreciate that, that one clarification. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? I do. I do. Ms. Long? <clears throat> you keep saying this is unique and singular, and yet there are eight lots that had that exact same problem, right? You got private canal, both top and bottom. Right here. No, you got the, the four down at the end, on the yeah. left, my left, over here. Right. <laughs> well, well let, me, let me make one clarification. I'm, I'm looking at lot 42, 41, 40, and 39. They all have the same issue. Right, Lots. the cul-de-sac issue. 13, 14, 15, and 16 have the same issues. As the, the rounded as, as to the cul-de-sac. Rounded, yeah, correct. They all have that same issue. <clears throat> and I was wondering, did you check to see what they had done about the front yard setback for those seven no, additional? No, because I cannot put into evidence tonight the fact that other people got a variance to justify this <laughs> variance. So, or didn't get one and built it that way anyway. Correct. I just don't think that's for the board <laughs> to consider. We have to consider I, this I one just, alone. I think it would be interesting to see how they dealt with it. Probably have, but I can't tell you about that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and then you've got one, two lots way at the other end that got excess property. Right. Instead of being chopped off, they got, right. got a little piece added. Well, I'm only pouring out the plat to show the property line. My I hunch understand. is, as Mr. Pasteur has noticed, I'm, <clears throat> I imagine that that seawall meanders like everything. Why they did it, maybe for docking boats. I'm thinking, it's hard to understand. That's what I'm thinking. But but they created a zoning problem when they did it. Uh, just as a follow-up to Mrs. Long's 
question, you testified the existing house is well into the front yard, the existing yeah. front yard setback, and she asked the question about the surrounding cul-de-sac lots, number 39, looks like that's still an existing home? Mm -hmm. it, in Google, it does. Is it still one of the original homes? Let me look. It might have been one of the pictures that... Uh Anyway, it, it on <coughs> on Google Earth, it appears to also encroach into the front yard yeah. setback quite a bit. Um, so I'm just wondering, t trying to answer her question, you know, is was that consistent throughout the rest of the cul-de-sac lots with the older homes? And that was how they dealt with the hardship. I guess there was no rule back then. Would that be true? There was no zoning rule? Well, Zoning came in January of 56. Okay. So this plat was laid down in April of 56, just after zoning. Now here's a photograph that Roberta took, which it's close, looking across the street, looking northwest. That looks like an older home. Obviously this one's new. Courtney and Bess home is over here. So ranch style, you know, slab on grade. They may have got a variance. Okay. Any other questions? I have one other thing. I have oh. several. Uh, Courtney polled his neighborhood and provided all these letters of support from his neighbors that I like to file with. Uh, okay. No, that's fine. We'll with take LaShawn. those. Enter those into the record. If there are no more questions, um, you can have your five minutes of rebuttal, Mr. Randolph. That's all I have, sir. Thank you. Okay, without objection, I'm going to move to, I'm going to, move to close the public hearing. Uh, board, what is your pleasure on a motion and or discussion? Oh, Mr. Bassett, please. I move that variance request for case of BRB 1995 for property located at 4936 West Melrose Avenue South be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for reduction in the front yard from 25 feet to 20 feet and a reduction in the rear yard from 20 feet to 7 foot 2 with encroachment of these and gutters. Based on the applicant presenting competent substantial evidence in the record and of this public hearing under necessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 2780 of the city code. Specifically that we're dealing with a cul-de-sac curved front yard that is unique to just a few properties in this neighborhood and a encroaching seawall in the rear yard that's unique at least to this neighborhood compared to a regular square lot. And although the property extends into the water, the, um, the actual land does not. Um, and that the proposed house is encroaching much less on the front yard than the existing house. All right, we have a motion for approval by Mr. Pastor, a second by Ms. Long. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? You've been approved to six to zero. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Villa, thank you for your service to the city. Staff, we're ready for VRB 19-114. Okay, Roberta Mead Perry, Planning Design Development Coordination. The address is 2913 West Eileen Street. The code section under review this evening is section 27-156. The applicant is seeking to reduce the rear yard setback from 20 feet to zero, to reduce the west side yard setback from seven feet to four feet, to reduce the east side yard setback from seven feet to three foot, sorry, 3.7 feet. To vest the existing <coughs> conditions of the footprint of the existing primary structure built in 1947. And to obtain setback reduction for the carport addition for the covered porch area. Again, the work done for the covered porch area was done uh, without permits and there was a code complaint and we'll enter that information into the record. The property is zoned RS50 and the Hillsborough County property appraiser's information is included for your review. 
right away found it consistent, transportation found it consistent with conditions, with the request that the plan be updated at time of permitting. Natural resources found it consistent, zoning found it inconsistent. Property appraiser's information included for reference. Variance map. Property is located here. Eileen Street is here. Surrounding properties are zoned RS50. This is a view of the front. Again, this is the primary structure built in 47. View of the property looking east. Further east, looking down the street, looking west, looking further west. This is looking down the west side of the property with the addition here, again, primary structure here. Front view of the property, again, with the addition portions here, similar view. This is the canopy in question and the side yard setback, which was is being requested to be reduced to three foot seven. Rear of the property. And rear of the property. The corner section to the side yard and the corner to the rear. Survey of the property. Okay. So again, this is the existing alley. This is where the existing structure lies and was built in the 40s. Front of the property, side yard in question, side yard in question. This is a um, site plan with the proposed addition for the carport area, off-site tree, which is not in effect. The reason I show this one is this was a drawing submitted by the property owner. His original request was something far greater, but what he's asking for in his final request is something less. So we verified where the columns were. The columns to that structure are three feet point seven, three point seven feet from the side property line. His request was originally a uh, two foot. So, please. I do have to enter in the record the code violation citing and the documents associated with that on January fourth was the visit with code enforcement. And that was the status of the project at the time. Here it is again, the day that was cited. On January 25th, there was a reinspection and a setting for the code enforcement hearing. So on January 25th, this is what the project look like for code enforcement. We have nothing further to add to the record. Okay, any questions for staff? All right, seeing none, uh, applicant, please come forward, state your name, address, and if you've been sworn in. You'll have 10 minutes for your presentation. I love you guys. My name is Leslie Diaz. I live in 2913 West Eileen, uh, 33607 is the zip code. My application by the city is to reduce setbacks. I buy the property that way with the less setback because it was built that way in 1940, whatever it is. I don't pay attention. I just pay the mortgage and live over there with my girlfriends and my dog. The setback is zero because some Italian crazy build that property that way. So my big problem over here is the porch. Somebody called the city 
because they say that I'm building in that alley. I don't care the alley for no reason. I don't want it. Even when some people walk behind the alley. I'm just talking with Mr. Valdez. He's the guy behind me. I want to try to see how I can do that valley now come then. So I know the sewer, the sewer, whatever is the name, runs behind that property. So I want to do a nice plastic fence with a locket and some neighbors keep the locket so city can get access to the alley because I work almost seven days in a week and my girlfriend too. So that's not the point now. I, I used to do uh, that porch and my setback with with the back side of the, my property is must be one feet or less than one feet. I'm not, I just look at the paper, check out the paper over there. I do all that growings by myself with no help. So I got new pictures over here. It's the same pictures. I don't have nothing new. I have a tree more than 20 feet on my property. So whatever I call the city, call because they think I'm building something in that alley. I got a particular problem with one neighbor that is always complaining about the alley. When the guy behind me builds some property, he called me. So I know he's the guy that is snitching. He called me because my neighbor is doing bullshit behind my property. I don't care. It's nice, it's pretty, I don't care. Another neighbor put some palm tree that looks very nice from my second floor. I don't care. So I know it's that guy. So he called because I'm building at the Halley. The Halley is the surf. I just do that then porch for my dogs and done. Nothing else to, to say. Does that conclude your presentation? Yeah. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak either for or against this application? Okay, I don't see anybody. So yeah, please come forward. Robert Amin Curry, um, I did have one more thing to add to the record, and that was a letter of opposition. It was in your packet. So that's what I have. Sorry. Okay, does anybody have any questions of either the applicant and or staff? Okay, Mr. Pastor. Mr. Diaz. It appears that code enforcement showed up while the porch was under construction based on that photograph. Is that correct? Yes. And so they told you at that time that there was an issue with, without a permit and may, maybe about the setback issue, but it looks like you finished the project anyway. Well, when she goes there, okay, it's a big porch as you see. Yeah. So my guys, they put a big bean, aluminum bean, that that's the issue with the holly. So I don't wanna leave that bean to the holly. So the most that I do is cut that freaking beans. And of course, I just complete, because if no, it's not secure. And that happened in, you know what that happened? I don't remember when that happened because I don't want to think about it. Uh, that happened, I think, before July or in July or June. So I don't want to leave that green season, green season till I get the permit for all the aluminum banging and loose. You know, that's why I just, when she was over there, my job, the job was almost complete. I just put the last two panels that can be maybe two feet, I got no idea, and could the, the closed beams around. All the paint around, all that stuff was there. Of course, the fence too. So it's the only thing that I do, done. So I don't think that, you know, the issue with the porch is not the alley. You're not, I mean, the house is, is on a zero lot line, but that's, that's a different issue. The issue with the porch is that it's too close to the property line on the side. Okay. Right? Yes. And so instead of seven feet, it's closer to three and a half feet. But the picture we saw from code enforcement, 
the columns were up, the roof wasn't on, so it just seems like maybe that would have been the time to move those columns rather than finishing the project. I'm just wondering. Why? Yeah. Yes, why? One more time. I live over there with my girlfriend now and my two dogs. I work seven days a week. I know nobody cares. You know, it's my problem. I do that porch because I got two pit bulls and they play over there. And I'm trying to bring more pit bulls. What happened? Nice, beautiful. But the dogs stays inside with me. So of course, I, wanna, I want the dogs inside with me, but I want the dogs clean. Sure. So they are no little dogs. So what I do, my, my girlfriend work with a doctor and a studio at night. So what I do, just right now, they are playing over there. So they bust energy because sometimes I don't have time to walk around. Mm -hmm. So if my problem is, you know what? If I don't have my dogs, I remove the damn aluminum. Bye bye. I, wanna, I don't want to see nobody else. And I don't want to come back over here now. To get over here, I'm on call. I have to, to, to talk to you guys for that crap. I'm on call. I have to ask my supervisor. God, thank you. I, I, you know, I don't have that problem. My problem is my dogs. If, you, if I just reduce that aluminum, they're going to get wet. So when they play early and they get wet, I want to jump in my truck to prove my free service call. Get what? My two dogs. They are, they are dogs. They are not humans. So, you know, I can talk. Hey, you know what? Don't play what is wet. That's why, that's what I'm trying to cover that concrete. If it's not, man, believe me, I want to get the damn aluminum and bye-bye. Do you have that, that drawing that you drew so we could see the dimensions? Yes. I got more new pictures if you help me with Yes, thank you. So the width is 17 feet 10 inches at the narrowest part from the house towards the property line. 17 feet 10 inches? Yeah, it's the long cover in the back side of my of my property, okay. or that property. I'm trying to cover the most I can. Right, so what I'm saying is, I feel like the biggest issue you're going to encounter with us is that side setback, because it's not an existing condition, it's something you built. If you were to meet the setback, then you'd have to move that edge about seven feet to get the seven foot setback. You would still have 10 feet, 10 inches roughly of roof for your dogs or whatever. That's the code enforcement issue is that you built this too close to your neighbor's property. Back side? On the side. On my side? On the side. Where? On my side? You're facing the house. The How right much going to be? Seven feet or 20 feet? Seven feet. Well, just right now, line. from the pole. From the property. From the pole. Line. From my pole yeah. to the fence, yeah. I almost have four feet. I know. Oh, number two. I built the fence inside my property. Okay. So, you know what? Hey, guys, one more time. I don't want to put shit around. If it's good, good. If it's not, you know what? I want to put it back. I want to sell that property and buy me another property that my dogs can live the way they can live. It's freaking 10, 12, 16 years. I'm doing that. Hey, I work seven days. I'm not doing that to put music over there. I don't do music. I don't make, I don't make no parties. It's a it's crazy. I want it for my dogs. I want to keep it that way for my dog. If it's not, you know what I want to do? I want to take it, sell that property, and go to another place. I think the, I think what it comes down to is, you're, you're, you're willing to move the roof line back to the columns that are there. So that gives you about four feet. It sounds you, like that's what you're they, saying. Hey, when it rains, yeah, they want to get wet. Well, I mean, okay. All right, well, that's, that's all my questions. I, hey, that's what I'm asking over here. If you know that's going to be a problem, you know what I do? I do that crap in a Sunday, that when the city is not working. I don't know that one's going to be a big concern for nobody. Yeah. And one more time, 
If the guy that is niche on me, where's the guy? Where's the guy? Mr. Feldman, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. I do. And, and I, I really enjoyed your presentation. I think you did a nice Man, job. Man, it's, it's the way that I talk. I know. Um, so let me just try it a different way because I, I agree with what Mr. Pastor said. Um, the alley in the back, you, you have an alley behind your house, right? And, and, and in that area that I know, I've been talking with a retired woman from the city that worked with the city a long time ago, Moreira. And it's a, it's a average, the setback is average over there. Yeah, and, and I don't have a problem with that. As, Good. As you pointed out, the house was built right there up against that alley, you know, 60, 80 years ago. It hasn't been an issue to anybody. Anybody who bought there after that, they understood what they were getting when they got in there. So I, there's no issues with that. You did expand it um, recently and went towards the side. Um, can you explain to me why you, why you have to go to where you're going on the side? Why does it need to be that wide? That wide. Instead of a little shorter. And, and I know you've, I heard about the dogs and the Perfect. dogs One more time. Dry. Is there anything that you could do, put a fence up on the inside, a low fence to keep the dogs in, things like that? To, to expand the space between the constructed part of the house and the neighboring property line. Of course I can do that. Of course I can do fence. Of course I can, get, I can go to pet supermarket and buy the invisible fence yeah. and kill the damn dog. I got 90 pounds dog. They're beautiful dogs. 90 pounds. Yeah. Do you want to tell me that kid, because it's a kid, it's better than many people that I know. And many people that I know be, that stays in this room, whatever, today. Hey, buddy, just play from here over there. Don't go over there. What I do at 6 a.m. when my girlfriend wake up, the first thing that we do is get from the second floor, downstairs, gross, go, walk across this, all the house. The, the big dog sleep with me <coughs> and get that door downstairs and there to play. He play almost hour 15 minutes. So when I left around 7.15 or 7.30, I put the dogs back. The little kid dog, the female, is only one year, sleep in a cage still because I don't want to buy my shoes or my nice furniture. I work hard for my stuff. You know, nobody giving to me. I work hard. So the only thing that I do is leave my dogs over there and play. I'm over here one more time. Because somebody called the damn credit because how about the stupid Holly that I don't want it. And, and, and I understand that our obligation, what we can approve um, has to be based upon some criteria. And in order for us to say, yeah, do what you do what you would like to do. We have to be able to explain why it needs to be placed because in, in that just right now is covering almost of the con concrete property. So when I got a little rain, the drain, for example, where is my gutter? Where does, where it does stays the, close where to does the, the fence. End? Where does the concrete end on your property? Does it run to right to that point where the columns are? I got a picture, a new picture over here. That one yeah. is from my column. Put it on the, in the overhead. You see, that's my column, and that's the end of the fence. So when okay. rains, rains from here that way so they don't get really wet if you if i have to move that roof must to be over here so all that water is the concrete i don't build that concrete if it's if the water they don't have no level they're gonna get deep inside my concrete so i'm not doing nothing i'm not i'm not a hat hat do you think i want to stay over here i don't want to stay over here mm. talking that's my problem. If I reduce that roof, they want to get wet, they don't want to be good for my dogs, and I want to sell that damn property and find some place that I can, they can stay because they are my priority. Let, let me ask you one more question. Um, you have a lot, of, a lot of space in the front part of the house, right? Uh, between the front of the house and, um, and the street. The property line in the front. Um, do you know? I can't. 
Does any does anybody see what the distance is from the front of this to the street line? Okay, and and the set the front yard setback is what twenty five. Um, Miss Curry. It's twenty. Twenty. Sorry, it's fifty. Okay, is there any reason why you can't expand the porch forward? Give the front bit, of my house. Yeah, go forward with the porch. Give the. Um, Give the puppies a little bit more space in the front, but cut it back on the side. I mean, other than the fact that it's a pain because you've already got. Okay, I'll explain you pretty easy. I want to build something at the front of my house. Number one, to do something like this, I had to put a, a fence, at least six feet. They are pit bulls. They are animals. They don't understand. Hey, don't bark. Don't go. You know what? They're gonna be barking. They're gonna be worse. I'm trying, let me tell you, I'm trying everything that I can. Even I'm trying to rescue another two dogs, you know, but I need to build something with at least an AC mini speed so they can sleep. I'm rescuing him, so I don't feel bad because they can sleep inside. Those two is sleep inside with me, but I can bring another two and sleep inside with me, not those big dogs. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to rescue and I'm trying to find all the way, even building in my front side, and that don't wanna work. I have to fence because they can see people walking. It's West Tampa, you know, it's crazy. You can see people working at 4 p.m. with a bottle of beer in his hands, you know? And you can see people dancing in the street at the 4 p.m. It's crazy neighborhood. Sense I just live over there because <laughs> well, for my job, because I make a good deal after my divorce and because it's good for my job. But if it's not, I wanna buy something in Lutz or far away, don't, some people leave me alone. Uh, and that's because I'm, I'm just trying to keep it just because the water rain and because they can be dry. So at 7.30, when I click in my tablet that I'm going to my customer, I don't have to go a step and say, you know what? My dogs are wet. So I ha they have to take a bath just right now because I, don't, I don't, can't live with rain in his body now. <clears throat> they want to fire me for that. So want to be on my job or my dog. So I'm trying to keep both. That's it. Easy. I'm sorry. Miss Curry, could you blow the uh, survey that's on there up a little larger? Okay, that's good. Mr. Diaz, um, this survey was done in 15, I think I saw. It shows the fence. You testified earlier the fence is on your property. The fence. Is, is that fence on this survey, is, is the current fence in a different position than the fence on the survey? Is the, well. Did you move the fence? No. Even, I put the fence not in my front, of course. No, I'm talking but about the back side. side uh, Curry, I put it inside. Point, one feet inside? inside, so I got another feet. So even if I make a new survey, I'm fighting today over here for one feet. Maybe. Well, that's what I'm trying to understand because if your fence is, is the way this is drawn. No, I put the fence can you show, this side. Can you point to, could I you got a pen over here. or a pen or something? <clears throat> because if I didn't know this, I would say that you were inches. Well, as, as I see my property over here, no? Correct. And the fence was over here. So you, I put the fence inside here. Okay, inside this line. You moved Even. Here. I leave the iron fence for my neighbor. He take it, but I don't take it. My okay. fence guys, well, they don't take it. Well, let me ask you the question a different way. How far away is the fence today from the property line? Well, I got that survey, so it it says, that one it, is my property. Is this, this one, one is my property. This one says it's 2.7 feet. You moved it away from the property mm -hmm. line? Inside, inside my property. So six inches maybe? No, a feet. A foot? Yeah, be, yeah, exactly. Because to do that plastic concrete and all that stuff, the way that I made it can be too close to the fence. Okay, could you put that new photograph up where he had the tape measure? No, oh. he had the one where he had okay. a new picture with the tape measure. <clears throat> you might have to zoom out <laughs> a little See bit. Well, it's dogs. almost in focus for me. <laughs> okay, so you you took a very good picture here, Mr. Diaz. I'm it tells guy. us that the three foot seven setback that you're requesting 
is actually from your fence, not from your property line. So my question is that if you have another two or three feet to the property I know line, that. Maybe I'm fighting for maybe I'm a feet or less exactly. than one feet. I mean, we're, we're trying to understand Well, let me tell facts. you what I'm trying to do, my friend. I call a damn engineer. You call a dead engineer? An engineer. Oh. A smart guy. <laughs> I'm the sorry. smart guy, the smart guy, let me tell you, you know, you know the way, the, the world that we live in now. The smart guy job in my, in my property, maybe you know the name. I don't want to say no names. He jumped in my property, he tell me he loves Cuban, so he get Cuban cigars for free. Okay? <laughs> After that, he walked with me around and he tell me, oh, you got this, this agreed, you're going to be good. Perfect. I want to make you a new setback. Okay, how much is going to be a new setback? You have an idea? Do I have an idea? Well, I want to tell you how much he charged me for that oh, new setback. how much he was going to charge you. No, he I, gonna charge I have no idea. Okay, he's going to charge me a uh, 800 something. Was, Plus, that, was that the Cuban discount? No, no. <laughs> okay. He's going to charge me 800 bucks plus hour 50, around four hours to do the setback. Okay. To do my growing, what is the name of the, the property line limits? A survey, a survey. Oh, the survey he says is not good. He's lying to me because the survey is to those on 15. So okay. it's a still, was a still good. Okay. okay. I, when I, said, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, you've, I think you've given us good, good information tonight. Okay. So we, I think we have, unless we have more questions and I want to hear from others if they do, but I, it, for me, it was very important to understand if you understand well, the different, that a setback is measured to the property line and not your fence, because you're showing us a measurement to the fence. And the fence is one feet in my property. But your further away. Is it not? That's what you're saying, right? Yes. But so what do you mean? You're not sure how another... much further, but you're guessing what? My Another question is that, have we, that I need to bring somebody, somebody now and take care to see the real limits of my property, pay somebody else another 3000 No, you've already told us you don't want to do that, and you don't have to come back necessarily, okay? Uh, but I just needed clarification based on the new picture that you showed us, okay? My plastic fence, yes, is okay. one feet even right. in my property. I, I, I would like to follow up with the last no big question deal. Mr. Take your time. asked you. It is about, what it is, buddy. Okay. I, I still need clarity because I haven't seen any pictures of what's in front of this of this covered area. Is oh yes, I can show you. Is it grass? Is it? No, I want to show you just right now. Do you have you have a picture of what's of course, in front yeah. of it? Okay, show it, please. You uh -huh. see, that's from the back side, going that way. I got the company truck over there. And my another truck sleep over here, and my girlfriend, of course, sleep outside. That's it. That's the area that I keep my dogs. Okay. So they can they can play over here, and over there is like a meal concrete or whatever it is. So they can pee, they can do whatever they want, and I can pick it up after okay. my dogs. Right. That's okay. it. Thank you. That was a very that was very helpful. For well, I got more board. pictures over okay. here. You guys can keep it. If you don't mind, why don't you turn that picture in if it's not a part of your submittal? Are there any other questions, board members? Nope. Okay, um, Mr. Diaz, um, you actually have five more minutes if you think you need it. If you don't, you can say, I don't need it. And I'm okay. good. Okay, all right. You, you can have a seat. All right, without objection, I'm going to move to close the hearing. Board, what's your persuasion on a motion and or discussion? Long? A foot and a couple inches between the fence and this structure. And then according to the picture that we got before, he has another 2.7 inches on the other side to his lot line. Right there, 2.7. Well, he, he showed us 3.7 on the tape measure to the fence. Was it 3.7? Yeah, and that, and that is what he used on his notice okay. in his application. And then he's got another 2.7 on the other side of the fence, according to the survey. Because he said he put it inside that fence. He, he would have at least 
Because well, he testified he moved it closer to the house. Yeah. Inside the original fence. The, the, the fence that's on this survey. Right. right. So you have 2.7 there plus how much you moved it plus. I think we can simplify a little bit. The survey says that the house is 23 feet from the property line, 22.8. Okay. He says that his um, porch is 17 feet from the house. So that's about six feet between the edge of the porch and the property line, regardless of where the fence is, okay. assuming the survey's right and his measurement's right. <coughs> um, still a foot short, but that's what he's been saying all along. He's about a foot short. The notice is for 3.7. Um, so we just we don't have a we don't have exact information, but the general information is it's roughly five and a half or six feet from the property line, based on the documentation we've seen. So we're talking more than two feet variance mm -hmm. on that one side. Yeah. Okay, that's what I need to clarify. That's where I was going. It was close to. Comments? Discussion? Um, I'll just point Ms. out Walker. Okay. that um, the other requested variances are appears to best the location of the house. Is that okay? Um, all right. That's it. Uh, I have Ms. Walker. Okay. okay. We, we approved this. Can we? He's asking for seven to four. We already know. <clears throat> if we approve it, then he's automatically approved for four feet, right? And he can pump it out a little bit. Um, well, it's supposed to be per the site plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, there's some discrepancies between yes. the right. hand-drawn site plan and the survey. Right. Well, yeah, could be or, or maybe not. You're right. You're right. Um, so... We have to. We can only approve what's before us. Um, we could. We could open a public hearing up, but again, I don't think it would jive with the site plan. So it wouldn't, wouldn't do any good to open a public hearing up to reduce it per a plan because that plan doesn't exist. So um, <clears throat> I would say we should just move and you know make a motion on what's what's been asked for, what's been noticed. And regardless of whether it's exactly 3.7 or 2.7, it doesn't. It didn't sound like it was going to move uh, unless he had to move it. So, uh, and also keep in mind that he has to get a building permit for oh. this. He's he's got to still get a building permit, um, mm -hmm. and the building permit process will probably clarify whatever the discrepancy is. Uh, and as long as it's not more than what he, it, assuming he got approval, as long as it's not greater, he would be okay. If it was less, I don't think he's going to move <laughs> his columns to take advantage of what was granted. Uh, that's my opinion. So, but are you felt? are you proposing to give to the three point seven, which would then vest the three point seven, even though it's constructed to less than that? To less than that, yes. Yes. Uh, See, I'm comfortable with... No, wait, wait, no more. It's more than that. We're going the wrong way. So you're, but, but are you... Posts, we think the posts aren't 3-7. They might be 4-7 or 5-7. Yes, yes, but if you, approve five, what's seven. Been, if you approve what's been requested, it's 3.7 to Which, the property line. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. That is correct. Yes. And, you, and you're vested that. That's, yeah. I, I totally understand that. Right. But based on the testimony I heard, this owner, yeah, I mean, it, it does go with the land. You're right. So a future owner could take it down and move it, I suppose. But, again, yeah. there's a site plan issue tonight. We have to assume and rely on the evidence that it meets what was, what was noticed. So my take is it's a, this is not a zero lot line request. It's, you know, three and a half feet, um, the fence isn't even on the property line. So the neighbor's got you know, quite a bit of room. I think we could feel pretty confident that at least this owner has no intention of going back and moving this further 
and that realistically it's probably much less than 3.7 feet um, of a projection into the setback anyway you're right it does ride with the property but even if it does you're looking at almost four feet still and it's four feet on the other side just because of the house so in order to resolve this we would have to have them go back get a survey of existing conditions and come back here in a month or two and pay a few hundred bucks. And I don't know that for me it's worth that effort to find out that it's one foot six into the setback ultimately. So that's kind of where I'm sitting. Ms. Walker? Um, so I am, I guess, in the abstract, okay with this request, um, but I'm having a hard time figuring out how we can sort of put this within the hardship criteria. So, you know, maybe it doesn't um, injure the health, safety, and <coughs> welfare of others. Um, and, you know, perhaps it even results in substantial justice being done, but I'm interested in what the board um, thinks about, you know, how um, this conforms with the other hardship criteria that we need to look at. And, and that, was, that was the purpose of my question to the applicant um, and he did say one thing that I found um, in that respect valuable um, was that the existing concrete um, ran to that point um, and I it's not clear to me when that existing concrete was there but I'm going to assume based upon testimony that that existing concrete was there um, and that was the basis for where it ran to that's the case what we have is a practical difficulty question and there is some support to say well there's a hardship or practical difficulty based upon existing structures including the house where it was situated before and the existing concrete. Well not that any evidence has been presented to the to this point although the photograph of the neighborhood could be that it has been or is part of the record it would appear to me just from a, a thematic standpoint and particularly given that two sides of this house one side is zero lot line the other is obviously well within a seven foot setback which is the way things tend to operate these days <clears throat> my gut feeling and from looking at those pictures is that a lot of houses in the neighborhood have zero lot lines have three foot four foot setbacks all over the place so you know you could you could at least look at it as if you know this is in harmony keeping with the harmony of the neighborhood I mean that's kind of a one of the criteria so I'm surmising that maybe that fits I don't really have anything else to offer. Would somebody like to make a motion? Okay, Ms. Wong. Um, do you want to add to it? I, I would. I would. Or amend. I mean. Yeah, I would recommend or request an amendment to to address um, first the rear yard setback, which is an existing condition based upon the 1947 home, which I would also point out is along an alleyway, so that kind of provides a buffer. Right. Um, and then the existing conditions of um, the the concrete running along the side. Which was built in 47. That exactly my point exactly. Yeah. So if you if those you wouldn't mind those yeah. amendments. So well the additional hardships are 
The house was built in 1947, and I think it's the west side yard setback uh, is where the house was originally built back in the day. And the rear yard setback <coughs> would be zero, but there's an alley behind it which provides an additional buffer to the back door neighbor. <coughs> With those amendments, yeah. I with those, are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. I'm fine. So, okay. So, with those amendments, Mr. Feldman has <coughs> seconded. Uh, so, we have a motion for approval and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Diaz, you've been approved. Six. So six. Great. Six to uh, zero. So, to be clear, because sometimes I miss communication. No, that's fine. Will you guys send me a letter. Oh, I have to go back to the city and I start paying for my uh, permit or something? Mr. Simpson, Simpson or, or actually Ms. Curry, they could address it. You? Ms. You? Should, well, should Ms. Curry. Yeah. And then at that time, I'll oh, I remember you. <laughs> actually, if you, if you want to, Mr. Chairman. You're the lady you're scared that I can take a picture of you Pardon. that day? Sir. I don't know. If, I'll meet you out in the hallway. We'll yeah. explain so they can move it forward. To the next hey, guys. Time. Happy New Year 2020. You too. going to be a good year 2020. You too. <laughs> Okay, uh, ne our next case is VRB 19 118. Okay. Roberta Mead Curry, Planning, Design, and Development Coordination. The address is 16161, sorry, get that right. <coughs> 11616 North Nebraska Avenue. The code section in review tonight is Chapter 27 289 .3. Paragraph B, paragraph six. This is a signage case. The applicant is asking to install a wall sign on north elevation to increase the allowable signage square footage from zero square feet to 66.82 square feet. The applicant is seeking to install a new sign on the north elevation of the existing structure. The property is zoned commercial intensive, CI. And the Hillsborough County property appraiser information is included in your packet for your reference. <coughs> right away is found it consistent. Transportation is found it consistent. Natural resources is found it consistent with conditions and asking for the tree to be pruned per their specifications. Are none of the trees be pruned for visibility reasons to see the sign? <coughs> Zoning has found it inconsistent. Property appraiser's information for your record. Variance review map. Again, the property in question is here. The structure here. There's an existing sign on this side of the building, and they're asking for a new sign on this face of the building, the north <coughs> face. Again, all surrounding property, even across Nebraska, is zoned CI. This is the front of the structure, the north elevation. This is looking towards the parking area. Again, the north elevation is here. Looking left. So again, the structure is over here and you're looking out towards Nebraska from the parking lot. Looking south on Nebraska, again, the building in question is here. This is the north elevation. This is the existing elevation facing Nebraska. Looking north on Nebraska. Okay. And that is, is the elevation facing Nebraska with a similar type sign. Same elevation. This is looking back from Nebraska into where the front elevation of the building is and out to the parking lot. Again, from the other side of the building, north elevation, looking out towards Nebraska across the parking lot. Site plan. Again, this is the building here, Nebraska, Fowler Avenue. And again, some additional information just to show you the sign and the size of the sign, the square footage. <coughs> I have 
nothing further to add to the record. I have a question for you, Ms. Curry. The, all of the property to the north of the building is parking lot. Pretty much parking lot, yes. Is it required parking to meet zoning? All of the parking that's there, or is there excess parking? I didn't look at the parking numbers, and I believe transportation is here if you want to ask them that question, but we didn't consider the parking calculations for this no, project. No, I'm just curious about the use of the property. The use was previously retail, and this is uh, currently retail uh, going back in, no, not family dollar. Okay, well, was the previous mean, family. I mean, what I meant was the use of the parking lot area. Could it be something other than parking? Anything in the CI district. Okay. But there is a certain amount of parking required, required for the school. Required, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll let the applicant answer them. Yeah. Please come forward, state your name, address, and if you've been sworn in. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and Board. Uh, my name is Joe Ware. I'm from 12010 Lucas Street in Fort Myers, Florida, here to represent Dollar Tree. Uh, I would like to start just to recap real quick. I don't want to repeat what was already stated, but uh, the existing site has the Dollar Tree sign, which is on the side elevation facing Nebraska. That is the side elevation. The hardship that we're here for tonight is the sign on the north. There is no sign on the north elevation. And in fact, it looks like the, the, the property is vacant as you enter. If you were to come down Fowler heading east and you turn into the parking lot, uh, there was no way to identify the building. Uh, yesterday, I went by the site and I did take three photos, which you do not have on file now that I would like to present. If it's okay, if I can issue those photos. Uh, I issued them to with your IT. She, she was gonna pull them up for me here. If not, I have hard copies. Uh, can I have the so one? Yeah, this is this is uh, well, you had kind of had this one, but this is more of a, a, a better shot. Yeah, yeah, slide yeah. Here. So this is when when you pull in off Fowler and come and do due south. There is no sign on the building to identify that it's a Dollar Tree. Uh, I interviewed the store manager and he acknowledges every day, of course, if you're not from the area, people are coming in and they, they're having a hard time finding it, especially coming up from the north and if you're not from Tampa. And let me just show you real quick on a site plan. And all I'm saying is if you were, if you were heading east on Fowler, I'm heading east, there's two driveways, there's one here, and there's one here. And the view that I just showed you is what you see when you pull in. There, now that we do have a freestanding sign, so that is a, it's a multi-tenant sign, which is here, but that doesn't help people know if, it, if Dollar Tree is in this building, is Dollar Tree over here, is Dollar Tree over here. And this is your only sign that identifies the wall sign for the Dollar Tree. So this is our hardship. Uh, I did have another photo, which I was hoping to present, that showed that the family dollar did have a sign on this elevation. Uh, I wanted to show you that picture, but uh, are you, did you see it? Okay, all right, so, and the sign that we would ask would be, be a little smaller than that one. So we're not asking to go over square footage, and in fact, the sign that we have existing now on the side is under the square footage. So we're simply asking the board if you could please approve so they can have ID and help local people or, or tourists come in to find the store. That's basically it. Okay, does that complete your presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the board or against this application? Ms. Long? Um, what you want to do is you want to put a sign. Well, there's the one that we were just looking at, which I have now lost. It's here. You, you have the one sign out. So that you see it from where? You see it from Nebraska? Well, the one where you had the, the one sign and then the orange building. The orange sign and the orange building. 
Okay, on your on your screen now. This is a sign. We want to just put a sign back on the front facing north, which is visible. Matter of fact, had an, of another photo I can show you, which is I that face Fowler or uh, Nebraska. It's going to face Fowler. Going to face facing Fowler. north. So your whatever that other sign is faces east. That what it faces Nebraska. The other sign faces Nebraska. You can correct. The other sign faces east, which is Nebraska. Okay. Now. Can you put that sign up again, the, the picture where you had the orange building and the little orange sign? Well, that was the family. Site, that, was that was the family. former client, that was the former owner, oh, was the family, was family dollar. Oh, I didn't, so you're not gonna have the other sign. So we wanna replace, what I'm showing you on the screen now is where the family dollar was that you're talking I, about. I, and ahead. I wanna put Dollar Tree. We, or you just client. wanna trade out family dollar and make it say Dollar Tree. Correct, because now there's nothing there. I understand it. Okay, so you're going to have one sign on the building. One, there's one existing sign now that faces Nebraska, and that's on the east side. Okay, so you are going to have the. We're adding additional sign on the north elevation facing Fowler. Gotcha. There's no sign now, and that's the problem. When you come in, you cannot tell that it's a Dollar Tree. But the entrances to this are off. Uh, Fowler put the site, and if Nebraska I put, both. Yeah, here there. Okay, so sign B, that's the one I'm talking about. Okay, sign B, okay, sign You're B, that's, that? the, that's the multi-tenant sign. I Pardon? Can, sign B is a, an existing multi-tenant sign. Okay. I can show All you right. a picture if you like of that. Right. So the entrance is off <coughs> Fowler, and Fowler is there's, there one off Nebraska? There's two, there's two off of uh, Fowler, and there is one, two off of Nebraska. Okay, so you, you get two. On each one, and F dot isn't giving you any trouble with the Nebraska Avenue cutout. No, we just the trees do need to be trimmed, then because okay. right now it's it's not helping. Okay, I'm done. Um, how big is the sign on the east elevation? The existing sign. Mm -hmm. Existing sign on the east elevation is 96.25 square foot. The allowable was 106.25 square foot. And the picture that you had up just uh, a moment ago showing the proposed yes, new sir. sign, is that one drawn to scale? Yes, on, it is. On it the is, building? It is to scale. Okay. And so that is that is the square footage you're asking for, the 66 point point eight two square feet. 82 yes, square feet. Okay. Yes, sir. And you don't need another one on the other side of the canopy. No, they no, don't. No. <laughs> okay. This man, he just... Uh, all right, all right. And I, I'm just... Uh, I was just trying to understand the lay of the land. All of the parking lot to the north of this store is being used for the store. For this store and the, uh, all the businesses in the shopping center. Well, there's another huge parking lot to the side, which according to the property appraiser's uh, website, isn't a part of the physical property. It's adjacent to another parcel, but you're saying this was developed the entire area here is basically one ownership, one. I can't speak for that. Oh, okay. I'm just simply representing Dollar Tree. I don't. Uh, okay. I don't know what exactly what. But in my opinion, I mean, when I was there, I did the surveys and all. It looks like there's the flea market. There's a, a mobile phone, but every anybody can park for these businesses. For in all this of park. these businesses. Correct. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any other questions for the applicant? Seeing none, you have five minutes for a rebuttal if you need it. I have, I have nothing further. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, without objection, I'll close the public hearing and ask the board for a motion followed by discussion. Mr. Pastor. We don't do anything different for a sign, right? Just trees? Different? Okay. No. Move that variance request for case BRB. 19118 for the property located at 11616 North Nebraska Avenue be granted as depicted on the site plan and presented at the public hearing for an increase in allowable signage square footage on the north elevation from zero feet to 66.82 square feet with encroachment of leaves and gutters. Based upon the applicants presenting competent substantial evidence in the record at this public hearing of an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 2780 of the city code. 
specifically that there is a practical difficulty with that this site has, or this building has two roads of view to the building and they're only allowed to have the signage on the eastern road, which is Nebraska, although two of their four entries is from the north off of Fowler and their only representation is a small multi-tenant multi sign that does not identify which building is theirs. So the practical difficulty is the inability for patrons to find the building once they enter the property, if they even know that it's there. Okay, we have a motion for approval by Mr. Pastor. Do we have a second? I'll second it. And Ms. Long, we have a second. Uh, all in favor of approval say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's been approved six to zero. Thank you. Too late. We're closed. <laughs> Unless it's not about the case. <laughs> no, hold it. All right, our next case is uh, VRB 2005. Hi, Roberta Mead, Curry, <coughs> Planning, Design, and Development Coordination. The address is 2609 West Jeton Avenue. The code section in review tonight is 27-156. The applicant is seeking to reduce the side yard setback from seven feet to 4.3 feet. The applicant is seeking a variance to construct addition to existing primary structure. The property is zoned RS60. <coughs> Hillsborough County property appraiser information is included in your packet. Right of way is found to consistent, natural resources has found to consistent, consistent, and zoning has found it inconsistent. <coughs> property appraiser information. Property located here in red, Jeton Avenue here. Majority of the properties surrounding is RS60, and you have RS75 to the north. Front of structure, looking east, looking west, looking towards the left side of the house. It's hard to see, but this is the other side of the house where they're proposing the addition in the back. <coughs> Another look down that side of the house. Survey. This is the proposed site plan. And this is where they're proposing the addition here. I have nothing further to add to the record. Are there any questions for staff? Seeing none, applicant. Oh, wait, excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do we have to Mr. vest Pastor. the house? It appears the house itself is in the setback. And if so, did that need to be noticed, et cetera, et cetera? Good question. We're looking at the variance uh, for the addition only at this point. Okay. So. So a question for the for legal that they're not required to um, to notice the existing structure is also in, in violation of current setbacks. Well, we just because it's in violation of current setbacks doesn't necessarily mean that it's in violation of the code. If it's a if it's legal non-conforming structure, then um, they're not required to get a variance to vest it. They can keep it under the non-conforming provisions and um, for the life of the structure, whenever the structure's old, it comes down, and then whatever's built there after that would, would need to conform. Uh, the fact that they didn't notice for it and they didn't request it means that the board can't consider vesting the, that structure, and the only thing that's in front of the board is, is the accessory. But wouldn't the fact that the existing structure is on the site plan 
as it yes. exists, that would mean that whatever's on the site plan, which the house is, <coughs> would be part of the variance, so therefore it wouldn't come up. Right, uh, um, I mean, maybe the, maybe the boilerplate motion language um, is, might not be appropriate here since the site plan, well, there's parts of the site plan that aren't in front of the board. But the, I mean, I'll, I'll look at the, the application the application simply says reduce the side yard setback from 7 to 4.3. Right. So does that not cover it? I mean, that, right. that's a notice. And if the, if, the, if the addition lines up with the rest of the house, wouldn't that, and, and the site plan is there, wouldn't that application cover the vesting? I'm not sure I understand, but I, 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 I think that if you're saying that, that the 7 to 4.3 pretty much covers the rest of the part, then maybe there isn't an issue. So maybe maybe we should just allow the presentation to correct on that to side. continue so that yeah, we can kind of flesh out these questions yeah. through the testimony. Well, I mean, except that there are 5.3 on the other side of the house. Okay, you're saying just just ignore it for us tonight. We, if they didn't ask for it, they didn't notice for it, then the board really doesn't have any other option. Right. But but if we were to approve the request that was noticed, they're not getting approval on the other side of the house. They just didn't right. ask for it tonight. Right. And to the extent that it's it, um, in violation, we don't no, I mean, maybe we'll hear about that, but um, it could be non-conforming, so they could be able to keep it under that part. Um, and if they want to vest it or come back in front of the board, that they, they would have that option. It would, would be option another application. At, at a later time. Okay. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Mead, are you finished? Well, I just want to note that, you know, you do have the year the house was built. Uh, what year is it? 48. Okay. We're slow, you have to help us out, Ms. Mead. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michael Lewis. Um, I'm here uh, on behalf of- Name, name uh, oh. address, and if you've been sworn in. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Michael Lewis. My address is 6604 Thoroughbred Loop, Odessa, Florida, 33556, and I have been sworn in. You've been sworn in, okay, yes. thank you. Go ahead. Um, so I'm, on behalf, I'm here on behalf of Cheryl Williams. Um, <clears throat> she um, contracted me to do an addition for her home. And um, through the process, we found out that um, we could not do that because it was, um, we had a variance issue. Um, the question that you guys had was it was an older existing home, so that's why it's not within the, uh, the current variance. What we're trying to do is um, attach a bathroom in the back corner of the house. Um, there's a bedroom back there, and it does not have access to a bathroom. Uh, that's the hardship aspect that we're, um, that we're going after is that um, there is no bathroom back there uh, for um, the person that is in the rear bedroom. So what we were trying to do is just square off the house in the rear. Um, this would not affect the curb appeal of the, of the front of the home um, as it is in the, in the rear right of the structure. Um, basically, all we're doing is continuing uh, that side of the house and squaring off that back corner to add a bathroom. Um, we were looking at, it was roughly about 15 by 13 um, area back there, and it would just run adjacent to that. Did you guys have any questions or any concerns? Uh, you have a full 10 minutes to give us any evidence, photographs, anything that you think will help us make a decision. Um, uh, we will ask questions, but you have your 10 minutes of it. That's, it, it was pretty cut and dry for me on my side. Okay, okay. so this concludes your, your yes, presentation. Sir. Yes, sir. All right, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against this application? Seeing none, board, do you have any questions for the applicant and or staff? Seeing none. <laughs> oh, wait, excuse me. I'm um, sorry. So you said that uh, it's for the benefit of one of the back veterans. Who currently resides in the? Uh, her daughter. Okay. How, how many bathrooms are there in the home currently? Um, 
There's one downstairs, um, and then and then two upstairs, I believe. There's three three bathrooms. One one down and two up. And two up. Yes. Sir. And how many bedrooms are there? Uh, I don't have the exact layout of the house. I don't know if we can pull it up on the property appraiser. Sorry about that. <clears throat> According to the property appraiser. <laughs> Can you see that information? Yeah, what is yeah, it? Three okay, bedrooms. It's right here. Three bedrooms, two and a half bath. Okay. All right. <coughs> is that is that pretty normal for homes in this neighborhood to have two and a half baths if they have three three bedrooms? Yeah, that's I mean that's pretty standard in that in that area. The the main thing is that she wanted to ha have her daughter have a bathroom, so it's completely enclosed and a, a closet area and she also thought that for future hardship of other people that are, dis, are disabled or elderly they're able to have a bathroom in the same area as the bedroom so her main issue is further down the line if um, they might need to use that bathroom that bedroom since it's downstairs for someone that can't go up the stairs they have a bathroom attached with their um, bedroom okay thank you any other questions? Okay, seeing none, uh, you have five minutes to, to rebut us. I'm good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, without objection, I'll move to close the public hearing. And would somebody like to make, make a motion and followed by discussion? Um, I think that this is just a product of a an old house that's already on this line, and this is a, practic a reasonable use scenario reasonably they should be able to add onto their house it's not actually encroaching on anything that's not already encroaching so with that I'll say uh, I move the variance request for case VRB 2005 for property located at 2609 West Jeton Avenue be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for reduction of side yard from 7 feet to 4.3 feet with encroachment of eaves and gutters based upon the applicant presenting competent substantial evidence in the record and at this public hearing of unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 2780 of the city code. Specifically that the practical difficulty is they would like to add on to an existing home that has this encroachment and they're trying to match the existing lines of the house. Um, and if this house was built in conformance, then reasonably this addition would be as well. So it's a product of the existing uh, home. Okay. I'm, want to amend that? I'm going to second it, but I just wanted to ask for discussion purposes because there is that issue of the other side setback. And it seems to me very obvious where the construction is going based upon the site plan. But perhaps we should just say the east side yard setback just to be clear on that. I um, accept that amendment. Yeah, and then I'll second it. Okay, so we have a motion for approval and a second uh, by Mr. Pastor and a second by Mr. Feldman. Um, any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? You've been approved six to zero. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming down. <laughs> If the board is okay, we'll keep plowing through. Oh, but we run long. Very long. Okay. Uh, next case is VRB 20 07. Roberta Mee Curry, Planning, Design, and Development Coordination. The address is 1513 East Anona Avenue. Code section in review tonight is 27 156. The applicant is seeking to reduce the front yard <coughs> setback from 20 feet to 10 feet. Applicant is seeking to vest existing conditions of primary structure due to the lot split and conditions set forth per formal decision FDN 1987. The formal decision was included in your packet for review and the conditions were outlined. The variance is a part of the condition. The property is zoned RS50 and the property is creator's information is included in your packet for reference. Right-of-way found it consistent, transportation and natural resources found it consistent, zoning found it inconsistent. Property appraiser's information. Variance review map, site is here. 16th Street here, Anona here. Property is on the corner. 
The remaining properties surrounding is RS50 or R R RS50. Hmm? Front of the property. Looking at the corner, this being 16th. Corner of the property. Same. This is looking down Highland Avenue, the side yard, or which we would really call the corner yard. Looking north. Further down Highland. Looking south down Highland Avenue. This is looking down Anona again at the corner of the yard. Looking down Anona, this would be the front of the house again. Further down Anona. Site plan's hard to read, but we'll try to get that. Okay, site plan. So again, existing house here, driveway. Again, this is Anona, Highland Avenue here. This is the portion of the property that was split off with the existing house to remain. Again, a copy of the formal decision entered in the record. On page two, of that formal decision and outlined the conditions stated here. I have nothing further to add to the record. Uh, board members, do you have any questions? Mr. Feldman? Yeah, I'm sorry if you said this. Um, so which side becomes the front uh, mm -hmm. yard when, when it's split? It's the shorter side, so it's yes. this one. The, the, so, technically, Anona was still the front yard, or was the front yard, sorry, because this was the shorter dimension when the lots were combined. Right. Okay. So, so now so this becomes the front. Right. Okay. Which would have been interpreted as the corner yard. Mm -hmm. So now this is the front. Okay. Thank you. And the, the front side yard of the original structure, current side, front side yard setback is only seven feet, and the house is about 10 on Highland? Yes, they, um, they amended their request because they had it. Uh, I mean, there, were, there, was, there is no code zoning yes, setback they, violation currently with the existing house prior to the lot split. Okay, one more time, I'm sorry? Uh, there, there are no zoning setback issues with the existing property prior to the split with the existing home on it. Correct. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? That's it. Okay. Okay, uh, applicant, please come forward, state your name, address, and if you've been sworn in, please tell me you're here. <laughs> not here <coughs> okay um, should we wait just skip over and go to the next one and, and then see if they come in it's the pleasure of the board I, I think um, if the board wants to continue it to the next meeting or move it around in the agenda it's the it's either it's the pleasure of the board I think we'll just move it on the agenda behind the next the last case and then we'll then the, we'll decide <coughs> the we rules do, do the rules would still require a, a motion a and a vote okay. to uh, so to so just the motion to move it on the agenda i move that vrb 2007 be moved to the last item on the agenda tonight okay and we have a second so all in favor say aye aye, aye. no no pose okay okay sorry staff you're up again BRB 20-12. Okay. Are you here tonight? I am here. 
<laughs> okay, last one, the second to last one now. Okay, VRB 20-12, address is 1507, 1501 South Del Mabry, and the tenant space is A103. This is a signage case. And again, for the record, I'm Roberta Mead Curry, Planning, Design, and Development Co Coordination. The code section under review is 27 1. It's not 156. Sorry, make a correction to that. It's 289, 27 289. They are asking for two additional wall signs or building signs for a total of three signs. Typically, the tenant is only allowed one sign. Increase the signage square footage allowed from 55.73 square feet to 93 square feet, spread over the total of those three signs. The sign over the main entrance to be at 20 square feet, sign facing Neptune, 36.5 square feet, and sign facing Del Mabry at 36.5 square feet. Applicant is seeking a variance to allow additional signage for the new tenant and replace signage from the tenant that was previously there. The property is zoned CG, Commercial General. Fort Borough County property information is included in your packet for reference. Right away found it consistent, zoning found it inconsistent. Property appraiser's information. And again, there's multiple buildings to this site. The building in question is this one here. I will show you the entire property appraiser record. Variance review map. Site boundaries are in red. <coughs> this is South Del Mabry, Neptune, the building in question is here. This is all CG. You have a PD to the south, plan development to the south, RS-75 with this area. This isn't exactly the front of the building, but this is where the front entrance to the tenant suite is proposed. So if you look at the site plan, it is actually this elevation. This is the extension of that same elevation on that building face. This is going Neptune, front facade here, facing Neptune. Again, full side of the rear. Again, that signage would be proposed here for that above the entry to the tenant space. Looking at the corner of Neptune and Del Mabry, this is the signage piece location proposed. This is looking down south Del Mabry here along the front facade of the building. Corner of Neptune and Del Mabry. Again, the other piece of signage would be located up here. And the tenant space is from here to here. No signage is proposed here. Again, front of the front of the building facing Del Mabry. And this is the side facing that parking lot. And again, that other piece of signage is proposed here up on this piece. Site plan. Again, this is the building in question. This is the tenant space. The markings in blue are the locations of the proposed signage. So again, the main entrance here, signage above there, and the two smaller signs proposed here and here. This is the proposed signage over the space to the rear, the suite entry. Signage at the towers. 
other sign at the other tower. They have no further information to the record. <coughs> questions I've got <coughs> oh sorry I just yeah take um, back. again on these oh okay go ahead I'll take sorry. it back um, I do have an objection letter that came in like an hour before I got here um, so I'd like to enter that into the record and I have copies for you <coughs> is a three-page letter that was received right before I got here. The applicant couldn't be here, but he does have a PowerPoint presentation also if he wanted to look at that. Are you ready for a question? Yeah, um, under the current sign code, in a multi-tenant building, each tenant is allowed at least one sign, correct? Correct, correct. one and wall it can sign. Be, it, can, it doesn't have to face a street, does it? It does. It does. It does. It okay, so in this right actual way. application, the sign, the emergency, what looked like almost a, an emergency entrance sign on the parking lot or the west side would be not a standard location. Correct. Even though that's their entrance. It's their only entrance, is it it's, not? Uh, well, they do have a rear door facing Del Mabry, but that's just the way they've laid it out. And maybe the applicant will show you a floor yeah, okay. plan. All right. And then one of the other two locations would be the additional ask. The, one of the other two, lo well, no, actually, the location on Del Mabry is allowed. The location facing south, because it's not on a right of way. Is the is the additional ask, so those two locations. I'm, I'm just want to be sure the board understands. Yeah, let me clarify. That if, if they if they were willing to only have one sign, it would have to be on Dale Mabry or Neptune. Correct. Okay. All right. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none. Applicant, please come forward. State your name, address, and if you've been sworn in. Jose Moreira, 15420 Livingston Avenue. And you've been, uh, sworn, been in. sworn in. Okay, thank you. Uh, before I start, I want to give uh, kind of a brief detail of who the client is and what they do and what they're going to do with that unit. Um, they pretty much have one focus. They're there for a pet emergency. Um, they're not like your ordinary vet that's open um, during the daytime. They're actually open from 4 o'clock in the afternoon to eight o'clock in the morning. They're open at nighttime. Um, and that's what they're trying to do with the signage. Um, they're trying to make it visible for anybody who's having an emergency to easily locate the facility without having to um, drive throughout the whole um, parcel. I have some um, photos that aren't on record that I'll provide after I present them. Um, with these locations on the towers, um, their main focus is to get visibility um, to the public. This is where the sign is proposed to be. Um, I also want to say that previously um, there was a sign there for the previous tenants. Before, back in 2005 or so, it was um, Mercantile Bank. When they sold and became TD Bank, TD Bank uh, received the variance to put their sign up there as well. Uh, this is Neptune, and then this is Del Mabry right here. This is just a close-up. As you can see, there are other signs of, uh, as part of that building. Um, talking to a representative for the city, uh, 
Palermo, who's a real estate company, actually also as well got a variance to put their sign up there on that part. That's high up on that tower. This is what the place looked like when it was a uh, mercantile bank. Well, we were trying to achieve the same image. And then when they sold and became TD Bank, TD Bank had the same sign up on that tower. And then this is the other location of the other tower. Uh, what we're trying to do is get um, the viewers going down Del Mabry to see that end of it. And then the last location, um, that's going to be their main entrance. Um, every unit there on that building has their main entrance on that side of the building. So it's nothing odd, it's nothing uh, unusual. Um, they just want to keep uniformity, so that's why they're going to make that their main entrance as well, to create um, just an easier way of getting in. And if you notice, their main entrance is facing a wall, which is another reason why they want the two tower signs, um, just so that it's easily found. Here we showed you, but I'll go through these again. Um, this is the site plan for the unit. There's a couple entrances to get in here. Uh, the first one would be right here. This is probably the main entrance for the whole parcel. There's one right here, and then there's one that's kind of hidden over here. And that's where we want our signs up to go. These drawings that she showed uh, were already full-scale drawings, so that's what they're actually going to look like if approved and done. We're not going for size here, we're just going for visibility. This is the sign on Del Mabry and Neptune on the corner. And then this is the sign that will be up uh, on the entrance at Neptune. That's all I have. This application, please come forward. Okay, please come forward. Uh, have you been sworn in? I did. Okay. State your name, address, and that uh, you've been sworn. I have some materials. May I hand off? Yes, you can. I would prefer to use the PowerPoint okay. if I may. Uh, as you get started, I want to remind you, all, you only have three minutes. Yeah, I have three minutes after I get my PowerPoint. Yeah, I haven't, I'll start right. it when the PowerPoint I'm going to go zippity doo dah as I can. Okay. We, we appreciate that. I appreciate you guys working up here. I know it's long and you're boring stuff all day long. Some people are mad and some are glad. Oh, this yeah, is this is the most fun around. that anybody is allowed to have. <laughs> I'm I'm not that good. Um, is there an extra copy? I don't see well. I'm going to need to. Uh... Sure, if you will allow the PowerPoint presentation, like, to be a little bit inserted. No, no, I'll, I'll allow it. Can I, like, speed it up? Is that the only thing that's on here? Uh, it's the one that's called VRV Review Board. There are many things on it. There's only, I'm sorry, there's six things on okay, it. Okay, but it says VRV on it? Yes. Be obvious? Yes, it has a case number. I won't. 
I won't start the clock, but go ahead and state your name, address, and, and My name is Mark start. Smith. I live at 1001 South Sterling Avenue. That's on the corner of Neptune and Sterling, about 500 feet from the subject property. Okay, all right. And you, ha and you did say you have been sworn. I'm sorry? You did say you have been sworn in. I ha I'm sorry. You did say that you have been sworn in. You've been sworn in. Yes, I did. Yes, okay. Here's your control. Okay. okay. What do I do? Ask, ask the sounds. Go ahead and with the PowerPoint, please. Okay. So, my name's Mark Smith. I live at 1001 South Sterling Avenue. I've got 38 slides. I'm going to run through it real quick. This applicant doesn't meet any of the five criteria that are established for granting a variance. Um, if we look at those, the alleged hardships are not suffered in common with other properties. And it says other properties, structures, or buildings similarly located. Second hardship I'm going to address does not result from the absence of the applicant. This is a self-created hardship by a commercial entity. Uh, the variance of grant is not substantially injure, injure the health, safety, or welfare of others whose property would be affected by allowance. I'm a property holder about 500, 700 feet. Uh, it impacts me. The light from this sign would be visible from my property my property will suffer light pollution. Um, the variance is in harmony with serves general intent purposes of chapter and adopted co Tampa comprehensive plan. I contend that it does not meet that criteria. And the last one was uh, result in substantial justice being done. And I suggest that this would, if you grant this variance, it would result in a substantial uh, injustice to me. Still push this, please button the big one or the little one. This one? Okay. Looking at what they've replied to for every single one of the five things up there, they talk about um, based on the current code, they're allowed one sign, and we don't object to that sign. We object to the two other signs that amount to 66% more square footage. The veterinary emergency group is a business. It's not a building. It's allowed one sign, not allowed multiple signs. I've been living at that property for 20 years and suffering really a plethora of bad commercial visionary properties. Uh, the sign facing, they, they state they need a sign for, um, to allow emergency people, but I contend these signs have created danger on Del Mabry where cars and tanker trucks are traveling at 50 miles an hour. Sign facing east to Neptune is not visible by anybody except someone parked at Neptune without creating a safety hazard. The sign facing to the south is only visible to the people going south. These signs are commercial, come hither. They're not about emergencies. The uh, Palmero Real Estate and TD Bank signs had variances. Those, those have bear, no bearing on whether we grant a variance today on these things. Both of the signs are composed that uh, are in proportion to other signs located on the building. That's not true. That's patently false. They're dramatically larger than any of the uh, additional signs. In this particular part of their application, they show the sign up there as a white sign, a backlit white sign, but the property is shown with a colored sign doesn't in include the light. This is what it looks like there. Again, I'll show you that this, the deceptive uh, application this is what it's going to look like at night. Now, I put that sign up there. It's a dangerous neighborhood, and I walk there every night. Looks like that. There's where the sign, you can see the uh, light post from, this, from the um, traffic signal. Someone was driving north on Del Mabry and looked at that sign there. They would be dramatically dangerous. I was almost involved and almost killed at that intersection with people not paying attention. Okay. Mr. Smith, more signs there. Is I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. Please wrap it up. Uh, there's that. There's, there's the property. That circle shows a pediatric uh, emergency care. Those people don't need a sign on night. Um, there's their sign. That's what they got. Adjacent building doesn't get a sign. That's what it looks like at adjacent building at night. That's the Wells Fargo across the street. They all comply. That sign is nothing looks nothing like that. It's as big as that square up there. Uh, that's the type of sign that would be near near to. Uh, it's 
these guys are out of town. They don't care what South Tampa looks like. They got 12 properties in Manhattan, one there and one in North Tampa. Okay. This is their to, own decision. I'm going to need to unsafe. stop you here. I'm, I'm going to have to stop you here, but we, but we may have some questions for you, okay? But I've got to stop you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else here who would like to talk on or uh, for or, or against this application? Okay. Seeing none, board, do you have any questions for the applicant and or Mr. Smith or staff? I do. Okay, Mr. Felder. Uh, let me start with the applicant. Um, you mentioned, um, you want to? Applicant, come forward, please, because yeah. you have to address us through the microphone. Yeah, you, you raised um, some signs that existed previously for the prior tenant. Prior tenant had two signs, not three, correct? Uh, they had three. They had one as well on the main entrance and then two on the towers, both okay. on the corner of Neptune and Del Mary uh, On the signage that you're counting, you've also got a sign on the freestanding um, pillar. Is that accurate? Yeah, it's a small multi-tenant uh, okay. sign. Uh, I, that was not my question. Though. My son, uh, You're talking about this, um, the sign on the top of the tower. The prior tenant signs do you know if they were lit, backlit? Uh, they were lit. Um, our sign is not going to be backlit. It's actually mounted flush to the building on channel letters, just like the Palermo. So internally lit? Yes. Okay. So not backlit, internally lit, yeah. but there, but it's still a lit sign. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the uh, what is the purpose of the sign on the Neptune side? Can you explain that to me? Uh, is to get the attention of whoever's looking for the entrance facing on Neptune because it's a small, dark, um, it's a small entrance to it. It's not the main entrance to it. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to let them know that they can also turn here, which is the quickest route for them to turn to get to our facility. Okay. It's not on Neptune, it's not on Neptune right? It's facing Del Mabry. Well, you have one facing Dale Mabry, so, and yeah. then you, you have another one proposed on Neptune itself. Is that accurate, or is it on the south side? No, it's on the south side. Oh, could you yes, put that, could you you put that so, site plan back up yeah. that actually shows the location of the signs on the building? Can you ask your question again? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. so, okay, so you don't have one on, on the Neptune side of the building. It's on the south side of the building, so people facing north would see this sign? Yes. Okay. And yeah, and, and, and I, I, I certainly understand the sign over your main entrance. You know, that's a small sign when people pull up. I get it. Um, why should we grant two additional signs? Well, I, 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 maybe one, but why two? When the client bought the facility, um, they thought about the sign package as well. Um, they actually hired Sign Zinc that's based out of New York. Um, and then we were contracted. We are a local company here, and we work all throughout of Florida. We have a state license. And pretty much they wanted to, they bought that unit in the heart of the neighborhood where all these other businesses were in order to have the same signage that TD Bank and Mercantile Bank had. Okay. They, they knew that they had to get a variance to get it approved. That's not a basis for what I'm asking you. I'm just asking you to explain why, why an additional, what, what's the hardship for us granting you an additional sign? Again, I don't have, I don't have any objection to a sign, a second sign over the main entrance. And you're entitled by right to a sign on Dale Mabry. So what is the, what is the basis of hardship for an additional sign on the south side so the hardship here um, and I also want to correct you there I'm sorry I don't want to um, the code allows us to have one sign over the main entrance but this main entrance is different it's not facing the right of way we are not allowed to have the sign on Neptune and on the corner of Neptune and Del Mabry because that's not part of the unit you can only have a sign on the part of your building so oh, that's so, part of the variance. So you're right. saying by right you would not have a right to a sign on. No. What about on Dale Mabry? We can have one. So we can have this one here. 
that's part of our building, our yes. unit, which is this. Yeah, that's the one Technic over your main entrance, right? Yes. No, uh, no this is the main entrance one. South, no. These are the two signs right here that we wouldn't be allowed oh, to Oh, I see where it is. Okay. We would have this one because, one, it's at the main entrance and on our unit. But this sign is not part of our unit. There's actually other businesses here. Um, and this is our main entrance. Where, and just like all these other places, their main interest is in the front. We're trying to keep that conform. But you could have a sign on Dale Mabry. You just have to move the one uh, where you've got that little C letter. You'd have to move that to the other side, right? That's part yeah, of I guess we could have one here, but it wouldn't yeah. be our main entrance, yes. Right, that's correct. Yeah, we could have one here, like he's saying. We could right. have one but there, right. but it's, it's not there. You're minute. entitled to have a sign on a street that's part of your unit. So yes. you could have one sign there now you'd have to have you would still have to have a variance to get the second sign over your main entrance yes but again i'm not i don't really have an issue with that i'm just trying to figure out what the basis is for having two additional signs they're just trying to get visibility from the public because they're only closed at night all right it's thank you somebody any question <clears throat> um is there an opportunity to move this, the location of the Dale Mabry facing sign around to Neptune? Uh, moving this the sign? One that's, yeah, that one there. Can you move it around the corner and yep. where it would be facing north? Is there any opportunity uh, to move it there? I guess, yes, we can. I mean, do you have a uh, picture of that side of the building? Mm, I don't think I do. Let me see. I don't, but I could give you an idea. So this is Neptune and uh, Del Mabry. Right. This is the other side. It would look just like that. It's the same corner. But, okay. So, so just no how you picture else, this. No, no other business has a sign on that on that tower on the north side. No. Is it about the same? But so again, we're not supposed to design your project, but we're, we have some opposition that we have to listen to. Um, and um, I'm just trying to understand what's driving that location as opposed to, and you've already testified, you could move it to the other, to the south corner on Dale Mabry, which is actually more, is closer to your, your unit, your space. Uh, um, you're, you're on the south side of the building. So you're saying if we move this one over here, it'll be closer to our space? No, no, no. I'm saying that if you if you were telling us you had to have a sign on Dale Mabry, you also testified that you're allowed to have signage near or on your unit, your part of the space, which is the south end of the building. Yes. Why is it on the north end facing Dale Mabry? They're trying to, if you look at the flow of traffic, Here, they're just trying to gain the attention of that that group. Okay, and that is a picture from Neptune looking across yes. Dale Mabry. Okay, so you, you could, if the board approved it, you could move that uh, east-facing sign to the, around the corner. Yes. Which would be seen by traffic southbound on Dale Mabry, would it not? Yes, it would, but it wouldn't be seen from this side. Well, but if I'm, we get the I'm not. I haven't made any opinions or uh, yes, sir. I, mean, I haven't decided yet but you're asking for a sign on the south side of the building for the northbound traffic on Dale Mabry. Yes. Okay. I'm just trying to understand the logic here. Well we um, get our sign packages from our client and right. in this case we would have two clients who are a third party for it. We were contracted out by TD Signs who actually drew this up okay. and if they want it we try to sell it. Okay. All right. Okay. <coughs> Does anybody else have any more questions for the applicant? I think what uh, Mr. Brown is getting at is by moving that sign just around the corner to Neptune so that the sign is facing north, <clears throat> what you have here is perhaps uh, a way to accommodate opposition in the sense that, you know, according to the map and where this is, the side directly opposite <clears throat> that north side of the building is uh, a parking lot is commercial property whereas the sign as you have it in the in the photograph uh, is facing towards Wells Fargo Bank which just beyond that is residential 
So we're saying we can move it away from facing resident, potential residential to facing more commercial and maybe that kind of you know helps things along. Yes, sir, I can see that point. Um, I'm not part of the company that would make that decision. I'm sure if you guys approve that, um, they would have no choice and they would take it. Do you have to re-notice but, anyway? Hmm? Do you have to re-notice anyway? Yeah. If you were to do that, so you'd have to come back. Yeah, and I also want to point out um, that these signs, they're all UL approved. UL is a company that comes in. We manufacture our own signs. They come in and they make sure that you're in compliance with what you're using for electrical reasons, all your bulbs and stuff like that. They're not hazardous, they're not anything. And they're all low voltage. That's what we pride ourselves in. We don't do anything neon, we do everything LED. You're not authorized to make any adjustments to the signage? No, I'm not a sales rep yeah. or a project manager. I'm a permit coordinator. Uh, let me let me actually ask uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith, would would some of the adjustments that we're talking about um, serve as more acceptable accommodations to you? I, I'm just curious to get your opinion on that. I don't need um, a, a big um, approach to the whole picture, but I, I do. I'm, I am interested to see whether that would be a more acceptable accommodation. So um, I believe you, you've misunderstood. I believe that the code allows them to have one sign for their unit, not one sign facing the street on, or on Del Mabry. So I believe they technically can only have one sign. Yes. So they can't have a sign that faces west and have any other sign on the property without a variance. That's correct. Okay. Uh, so well, they, we'll, they, we'll clarify. They can have a certain amount of square footage. They can right? have certain and, amount and of square And the signs footage. must face a public right of way. Correct. So I'm not sure that they couldn't have two signs they, if they, they, they did not exceed the square footage. I, 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 I'm not a, a land use attorney. I, I well, don't no, know the answer staff to here. that. She'll, I mean, she can clarify. Right. And, and if, if you were to take any action, I wouldn't want to agree to any action tonight. I would ask you to continue this because my neighbor is is very upset about this. It shines on her yard. Um, quite frankly, the, the signs pose a, a danger. The one that faces south. Uh, and, with, and, sir, this is, this, is, this is actually what I was trying to clarify when I asked my question. I, I understand your post. I, I, I would understand not, your concern. I, I, about. I would ask you to either continue the, the variance request or to deny the okay. variance let, request. Let me, let me recouch my question one time, and if, if you don't want to answer it, you don't have um, I'm simply asking if a, a change in the signage that would move the sign, whatever sign it may be, off of facing Dale Mabry and either north or south or re removing one of the other signs, if that would be more of an acceptable That is more acceptable, but, with more, but, I, but I would not per se accept it until I, I saw what they did. The very, the very basis that they present a sign on this that shows on this property uh, orange letters without the white background, and they clearly have CAD capabilities, can drop this sign right on there the same way I did, shows me that they really don't want to expose the very bright light, white bright sign, which in the series of photographs I gave to you guys show what it looks like at night. It's really, it's yeah. quite garish and ugly. I'm pretty sure you're misreading the drawing. He said channel letters, which means individual letters, not a big white box. It's, it's a white background. It's I understand. It's a translucent white background. And, and the, I think the you're channel misreading letters, that. quite frankly, are, to me, look inexpensive. The Palmero sign looks like it has a little class, but it looks like the liquor store signs down the street. And because they're removable letters on a channel, that sign's going to be there forever. There'll never be another variance request. They'll change the letters. So that, that sign is, is a, an eyesore in our neighborhood. And everybody else looks at Del Mabry as a great big ugly commercial thing, man, but I live there. I honestly walk to that Publix right there. I go past to this place every night on my okay. bicycle. I think it's we a got it. Place. Okay, all right, thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, can you clarify that, that they, could, they could have two signs if both signs faced 
public right of ways up to some amount of square footage, which I think is the 5573 5, square feet. And, and if I do the math, um, the smallest of the signs isn't facing a right of way, it would be facing the parking lot. That's the entrance sign that they're saying is 20 square feet. And if they just added that to the Neptune sign, um, which is interesting, they're saying a sign facing Neptune, and yet there isn't one in their presentation. Uh, that adds up to slightly more than the 55 square feet. Um, so there is no sign facing Neptune. You can be on Neptune. He has a right to be on Neptune. Okay, right? no, he technically doesn't have a right to be on Neptune, so let me explain. Okay, so, why, why not? It's a public right-of-way. Okay, again, we're looking at this paragraph for building signs in the signage code. <clears throat> and we go down here, and it talks about how many signs are allowed for multiple tenant. One sign, one building sign shall be permitted for each establishment with a main door entrance which faces a public street in a multi-tenant par parcel establishment. Establishments located on the corner can have an additional sign. This sign is not located on a corner of two public right-of-ways. If he was located, if his suite was here, then he could have a sign on Neptune and he could have a sign on Del Mabry. He's located here, which only allows him by code a sign here. And so, we take the square footage calculation by taking the width of the tenant frontage and multiplying it by 1.25, which talks about the size in this paragraph. Okay, and that's how we get to the 55 That's feet. how we get to the allowable signage at okay, 55.73 so square feet. Wouldn't, wouldn't the sign, the proposed sign on Dale Mabry have to be adjacent to his space or physically on his space? Correct, it would have to be within this boundary. Okay. So in other words, none of the sign, all so, of the signs need a variance. Yeah, so really, yeah, they're asking for variances in some more. regard on all three locations. Correct. Okay, all right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Clear as mud. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Anybody, any more questions for anybody? There is a foot candle requirement, too, so uh, the, the, the signs are required to meet a certain foot candle requirement. Okay, and brightness. that's not something we weigh in on. Correct. We just assume that that part of the uh, approval process is looked at. Is in per permitting. Right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Okay, any other questions for anybody? Okay, uh, you have five minutes for rebuttal based on the questions and comments that you heard. I'm sorry. Do I well, have five and or if, if you want to consider a continuance, you can you could ask for that. Uh, we can take a continuance. I can come back with more facts and Okay. And make a better case for you guys. Okay. All right. Um, we need a motion to continue the case. Is that correct? Well, we may want to ask it <clears throat> which date uh, if he's asking for a continuance to next oh, month. Oh, yeah. We're booked up week. next month. It would have to be we have March. Nine cases as of tonight. We've had one already. So, so, we so we're already at 10. Yeah. No. It, so February is out. It would be March. Is that okay? Is that okay? Uh, well, Mr. Smith, what is it? <laughs> what, what would you like with, to with ask? With my five minutes of rebuttal, I would like to ask you guys to deny. No, 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 you don't, you, no, you no, don't get rebuttal. No, you misunderstand. Not you're, you're misunderstanding the process, right? But, but if we do... Uh, if we do a continuance, you'll be able to come back, which you know. Right. So... I, I think was I'll just going to say, if we, if we have a motion for continuance, there would be an opportunity for anyone to speak about a continuance exclusively. Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't believe that that's uh, necessary. I mean, yeah. we have heard for, from oh, the parties and, yeah. and the action of the board. Yeah. If the board closes or makes a motion to continue, then that's right. Probably okay. of the board of the board. All right. So you're okay with March? No. No, you're not would, okay with. March. I thought it would be February. Uh, I think we just probably finish this now and okay. see what the outcome is. And I would take my rebuttal if okay. I still have the opportunity. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so you guys are pretty much well aware, you guys asked the perfect questions as to what the signs are and 
what are we uh, actually requesting. I just want to point out a few things um, from his slide uh, PowerPoint. Our sign would look pretty much just like the Perla Emo. We, our company has been in business for a really long time. They're self-made. Uh, they do all their signs. They do all their permitting. They do it all. Uh, they go through compliance with everything uh, across the board. Um, our signs will actually look like we do all the IHOPs. We do uh, some of the Wells Fargo's. Just like the Palermo sign, it's not going to stand out any much more different. It's not going to be a really obnoxious sign. It's not going to be seen from a huge distance. I'm not sure how far away he lives, um, but it's nothing obnoxious. If we weren't UL certified, then I can see the point he could make that argument. But we are, we are UL certified. Um, with every engineering drawing that we do, we have to have that stamp on there for approval. Um, if you're not UL certified, you're not going to get the approval. Um, a couple of the call outs. I don't know where my drawings went. Oh, they're here. A couple of the call outs on here I want to point out. Those are both of our testing labels. The low voltage uh, electronic transformer that keeps the lights dim is not going to keep them obnoxiously loud. Um, the lights are also on a timer. They shut off at a certain time. They're not going to be on um, all the time. They will be on at night, though. Um, and that's all I have for you guys. Okay. Okay. Mr. Attorney? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to. Um, make you aware that the rules of the procedure do allow 13 cases uh, per agenda. So the 9 or the 10 is, you can go up to 13. It's a pleasure of the board. Uh, we're going to go ahead and vote. All right. With that objection, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, board, uh, somebody like to make a motion and we can follow up with some discussion. We do have the ability to bifurcate this into individual signs, correct? Mm -hmm. Since it's less than what was noticed. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm personally I'm fine with all three of the signs at Del Mabry. It's a huge uh, commercial thoroughfare. I live right off of Del Mabry in the same kind of environment. So, but if it's the flavor of the board, I would be okay with excluding the northerly sign and approving the, the one on the back side of the building and the south side, which gets all the exposure of northbound traffic, helps patrons find the building when they're in the parking lot. But um, at the same time, I think I'm okay with all of them. So I don't mind hearing what other people think. Okay. Mr. Villa? Well, I think Mr. Pastor's comment is good. And I'll point out also that those two signs that he mentioned they're actually on the actual physical part of the building where the business is located, so it, it makes common sense as far as directing people uh, to the business. I, I'm, I'm not personally okay with three signs because I didn't hear justification for three signs, um, but I am okay, as I pointed out, with two. Now, the south-facing sign doesn't make much sense if you're not going to have the sign on the northerly part of the building facing Dale Mabry, I would suspect that the applicant would prefer to um, to review that, but um, that's not what they noticed, so. I don't know, I, I think if the northbound Dale Mabry traffic, you're gonna see that sign clear as day because it's facing south, right? Yep. You're gonna know it's in that building, so if you wanna turn in there, none of these signs approach the southbound traffic. So even well, though there's, there's, there's a there's a, um, a a freestanding sign which is still there that does yeah. and they get that exposure that's, from the that's there either way. Sign. So I think of all the signs, the one facing Dale Mabry is the least valuable to them anyway because you don't see that when you're on Dale Mabry. You only see it when you're at the Neptune light. From the, he showed us the angle. I, I would disagree. I think you. I think I don't ever see him when I'm driving by. The I think northbound traffic would see that, and I think southbound traffic would see it. Oh. But. Well, Either I, way, I, I don't. I don't. Least I don't personally like it. <laughs> um, 
I'd also like to point out that if we only approve A and C, or, or the one that over the, the entrance and the one facing down Mabry, um, they could, in theory, without a variance, move the other sign around the corner facing down Mabry. Like, yeah. but, just like yeah. but, but they don't need a variance for that one. They don't well, need a variance. If they for chose the not to put the other two signs up. But the variance sort of overrides their. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because of the Susan? Yeah, um, I obviously don't have a problem with the entrance sign on the parking lot side, um, and I think that that could, should be bifurcated. Um, uh, I'm kind of mixed on signs on Dale Mabry. There are so many signs on Dale Mabry, I, I don't know how effective they are. Um, that's why you have multi-tenant signs out on the road. Um, uh, there's no question in my mind that assuming it's not blocked by tree canopy, that if you were driving south on Dale Mabry and looking at a north facing sign, that would be a whole lot easier to see as a driver than trying to get closer to the corner and then see a sign on the side of the building. And by the time you see that, you're through the intersection. So you really, although there is another entrance just on the south side of the building. So it could work, it, southbound traffic, it could benefit by a sign on Dale Mabry. Um, so, I'm not 100% sure how this would work, but if, if the board, for instance, approved the parking lot entrance sign um, as a variance, because it doesn't face a right of way, um, and didn't approve anything else, uh, my assumption would be they'd have the right to still put a sign on Dale Mabry on their south end of the building. If, it's under the, if it meets the max square footage. So if we're approving, say, 20 square feet on the parking lot, there's 25 or 35 okay. square feet if still they available the that they could put on Dale Mabry right. without coming back to us. Yeah. They'd have to face Dale Mabry. Correct. It would have to face, and it would have to be at the south end of the building, which, unfortunately for Mr. Smith, puts it closer to where he doesn't want to sign. Sure. That's the unintended consequence. So, um, you might, you might need to clarify. Yeah, I mean, did I say anything I, incorrect? I, I think that would be an appropriate question for staff okay. being a kind of a zoning interpretation code. All right, sign expert, come forward, please. Since I was totally wrong last time, <laughs> I don't want to be wrong the second time. All right, what's the question? Okay, if we bifurcated the request and approved only the 20 square foot entrance sign on the parking lot side, if that's all we did tonight, mm -hmm. if they then chose to do a sign up to 35 square feet on Dale Mabry, on their portion of the building, yep, right in there. Somewhere, anywhere on here. Right, they wouldn't have to come back and ask for a variance because that is allowed. With the 20 square feet that they had gotten. Yeah, the total early. signage was 55.73. Right. If they don't exceed their allowance, then they're okay. The answer would be correct, yes. Okay. Does All the right. code say that they can only have one sign, though? Well, no. The, I, the, the question here is if we approve the second sign, knowing that they could come back for their sign by right. So, Gary, on your same line of thinking, why couldn't the 20 feet also be part of the variance? It was noticed that way to, to be over the allowable. <laughs> So well, you the variance in this case is the location on the parking lot. And the size, right? Well, no, that's only if the combination of signs gets over 55 feet. What I'm saying is they've noticed for more square footage than you would be proposing to approve in right. that scenario. Correct. So you could, if the board wanted to, allow the 20 square feet as a variance as well. So the 55 feet that's allowed by code or whatever it is, would still be allowable on the Dale Mabry side uh, okay. by right. Okay. Well, that's if we approve it that way. If yeah, if right. that's what I'm saying. We could approve it as either way. You could do it either out way. of the total or twenty in addition to the total. Right. That's what you're saying. Because of because effectively the code's allowing fifty five feet to face Dale Mabry. Right. So if we if we narrowed it down to that one sign in question facing the parking lot, it only faces the parking lot. Mm -hmm. It really has no effect on the Dale Mabry right. at Correct. all. Correct. So so why would we limit the Dale Mabry square footage then? Because we haven't really affected any of that at all. This is, well, that's, you could, that's you could. For each, I'm just saying. That's for each individual board member to ponder. <laughs> right. 
Okay. Theoretically, you could go either way. Yeah, it could be. Or somewhere in between. Yeah. You know? Because they, they requested up to 93 feet. They, they noticed 93 feet. Right. Okay? Yes. So. If you take the 20 feet over the entrance, subtract it from the 55, that their leaves sign them has 30. to be removed. That, that would leave them 30. And they have 36 square feet in each sign. So well, no, we're not approving if I'm being hypothetical I'm here. If you, if we were to approve the one facing the parking lot, mm -hmm. it is what, 20 square feet, am I correct? That's yes. what they're asking for, yes. And we don't do anything. And they're limited to 55 square feet. They have to remove their sign. Yes. If they put one on down there. Yes. But if we say 20 square feet in addition to yeah. what's uh -huh. already allowed, then they don't have to rework their signs. Well, they do have to. They still have to rework their signs because the location changes. But I have a question for Mr. Simpson, if you don't okay, mind. Okay, no, I don't mind. Go ahead. Um, Sign code's hard. I know. <laughs> um, but we also have to talk about, does, does the site plan apply when we're talking about sign codes? Well, it, for in this request, I, I believe it does. Okay. So let's say hypothetically we approved 20 square feet um, for sign A. And we agreed, hypothetically, that um, that would be in addition to the allowed 55.73 that they would be entitled to by right. Mm -hmm. Does Is there a notice issue because of what of how they noticed it and where, it, what, what they were proposing? Because they would now be allowed 55 point um, seven three or total, on Dale, for a total Dale. of seventy five which was less than the ninety three right but so the that's, second portion of it would not be tied to any site plan. Well they have to well, they, but it's tied to code. It's tied it is to code. Right. but but what they've noticed here is different than what they're going to be doing. So if you if you look at the three requests there's the there's two additional wall signs for a total of three on site is the first request. Yes. The second request is to increase the overall square footage allowance from 55 to 55.73 to 93 spread out over three signs. That's that's really what's at issue here because what the board is suggesting is that you would reduce that increase from 55 um, to 75. 75 and spread it over Two, two signs, signs as opposed to right. three. Which wasn't noticed. But the second sign. Right, but it's the lesser. But the it second, is. the second sign is by right, by right the code. under the code, and so it's no still less intense than what was noticed. Yeah. So I, yeah. I don't think there's a notice issue there. Um, it, it would just be a matter of the board reducing that second request to, to accommodate what's being discussed, and if then you would agree the third would. A as notice. Correct. If and if that's what's being in the square footage less than notice. Yes. Per code. May I interject? Okay. Yes, go ahead, please. Would it be one allowed sign per code and then one additional building sign at the rear? Per Not area. two additional signs. Right. It's going to be that's, one right. allowable yeah, that's sign. We're, that's what we're discussing. Yes. yes. And one additional sign. Not yeah. two additional. Right. right. No, just the okay. one additional. Just, don't, just which take the is word out less, for two additional. Right. That total square footage is going to be less than what was noticed. Right. Mm -hmm. if, right? If that's, if that's where we head. Okay. Does everybody understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for staff? All right. Uh, will somebody please make a motion? Uh, we need a really smart attorney. Um, I don't know what I'm going to just make. I'll try. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I move that the variance request for case BRB 2012, the property located at 1501 South Elm Avery Highway, tenant unit A103. Um, be granted as depicted on the site plan presented at the public hearing for a sign at location A on the rear of the building opposite Dale Mabry at 20 square feet. Based on 
the applicant presenting competent substantial evidence in the record in this public hearing of a necessary hardship and practical difficulty when considering the five hardship criteria set forth in section 2780 of the city code, specifically that code allows for one sign on the public road, and in this case, the functional main entrance is not on the public road and um, is in a multi-tenant building with shared parking lots and the practical difficulty is um, locating the tenant's space and entry. Did you want to amend that? Well, so we have a motion for um, partial approval. Yeah, but, but that motion as proposed does not do what I think you want it to do. Well, I said you did not the location an and sign. I said 20 square feet. But you did not say an additional sign. They're only entitled by yeah. right to okay. one sign. You would have to amend it. I'd like to amend that to sign. an additional sign <laughs> opposite Del Mabry at an additional 20 square feet over code. For a total of two signs. For a total of two signs. One, conforming to the code. And the second, as uh, described. Are we okay with that motion? I would just, if we could clarify that you, and I know you said an additional 20 square feet to what is allowed, but under the request, just to clarify that the allowance is 55.73 and that the increase, the variance would increase the total square footage for an allowance to 75.73 that would be spread out over two signs. Is that? Yes. The additional 20 square feet would result in a total of 75.73 square feet over two signs. We have a motion. Um, is there any? Is there a second? Second. We have okay. We have a motion by Mr. Pastor. A second uh, by Ms. Walker. Is there any discussion? In favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. You've been approved on a partial request by a vote of five to one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You know what? I have a question. You approved that sign. You never said no to the others. We didn't have to. We don't have to. We don't have to. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman, as, as for the case with the absent, uh, Applicant. Yeah, uh, VRB, <coughs> hang on. VRB, yeah, 2007. Are you here, the applicant? Nope. Okay, so board, I need a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to uh, postpone VRB 20 7 till. March. Drum roll, please. March. March. Till March. What's the date? March. March is. Uh, Oh, they were the ones that were the additional. Oh, this we didn't was. have an additional. Oh, so, oh. so they're going to go to. They were going to be to number nine to February. So okay. What about the first case? Continue? Yeah, we did con sorry. continue another case, didn't we? Oh, one no. was nine. Oh. Okay. No, we didn't. Uh, no, this would be the tenth case in February. Yeah. No. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Tenth case in February. All right. Okay. So then I move to uh, to continue until February. We have second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. It's aye. been continued. Ooh, we are adjourned now. Well, actually, can I take that back? <laughs> um, I'd like to ask the board uh, based on experience last month. Um, the, I would strongly suggest the board consider amending the rules of scheduling um, cases that require interpreters on the agenda as two time slots. Oh, so if you had two, uh, two cases that needed um, help, that would actually be four on the agenda, which would leave six to nine. Does that disenfranchise anybody? Well, it would be discussed up front when they're making application. So it's kind of like first come, first serve still. It, it may disenfranchise the people, but the board it's not fair to the board to be here until one well, what about Well, what about reducing the number of uh, cases? Well, that could be even worse. Could you craft some language? 
Yes. But but in theory, it would be two times two slots, because you're hearing it twice. You are hearing the case twice. But but the the uh, the impact of reducing the number of cases um, hits everyone equally, as opposed to specific people more. Well, I just think there are enough times, perhaps, that it won't even be an issue. But. I'm trying sure, to avoid I'm trying to avoid the problem. issue we just had with I, five of them. That, that's, uh, I think it was a problem because it was coupled with 13 cases. That's my point. That's what I'm suggesting. Yeah.